Ability. On offense, Missouri still features the strong arms of quarterbacks Phil Johnson and Jeff Handy. But today, the Tigers face the team that wrote the book on defense. The Texas A&M wrecking crew can demolish their opponents. Senior linebacker Marcus Buckley will lead the crew as they crash into Columbia today, here on Prime Network. University of Missouri and Columbia for the Big 8 Conference Game of the Week. Today from Faro Field, the Missouri Tigers host the Aggies from Texas A&M. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Armstrong. And what is going on in the Big 8 Conference? Man, if you closed your eyes, you'd think you're in the whack. Three teams from the Big 8, including Kansas, Colorado, and Oklahoma, leading the nation in passing. Not running, passing, folks. And Missouri, the team that has led the conference in passing the last three years, is in the middle of the pack. Joining me on today's telecast is Jim Ryan, a former linebacker with the Denver Broncos. And Jim, I hate to call it a controversy, but certainly there's something going on with the quarterback situation here at Mizzou. They're playing two of them. The incumbent, Phil Johnson, you would think his, uh, secure, his position would be secure with the team, but the numbers he put up last year, but not so. He's being pushed by Jeff Handy, the sophomore, a heady guy who doesn't make mistakes. Bob Stoke can't decide which one he wants to go with. It's competition. Now, Texas A&M wants to throw the ball more, but when you have a guy like Greg Hill, it's hard to do that. I'm a little surprised. Surprise that Greg Hill hasn't gotten more attention for the Heisman Trophy. I think he's that good. He's just a slashing type of runner that can power over people, but when he gets in the open field, he can score touchdowns with his speed. Greg Hill will be slashing on OmniTurf today. That's always a topic of discussion when we come to Columbia. And down on Faroe Field is Brian Nooner. Yes, Texas A&M has the 12th man. Missouri has OmniTurf. Uh, very slick surface. It has a sand base. Now, before the game early this morning, the grounds crew came out, wet it down. That pushed the, sa the sand down. But as the day goes on, it's going to dry out going to come back up to the surface and it's going to get very slick and it will come into play. Thanks, Brian. Put your spikes on and get ready to run around that field today. Jim, as far as Texas A&M, what do they want to accomplish? A few different things. Number one, they got to get their quarterback, Jeff Granger, involved. It would be easy to give the ball to Greg Hill all day long, but they need to get Granger some confidence. Also, they got to have few turnovers. In the first three games, they've laid the ball on the turf six times and lost those fumbles, so they got to uh, protect against that today and finally put pressure on Missouri's quarterback because with the competition, I think both those quarterbacks are a little rattled. Their confidence is waning, and they can be rattled today. All right, the Tigers on their sideline, what's their game plan? First of all, they've got to throw effectively. I don't think they'll be able to run the ball against AM very well, so they're going to have to control the ball by short, quick passes, and I think they can do that. They have to get turnovers, get this crowd involved in the game with a big play that gets them excited. And finally, they got to keep AM guessing with their defense. Don Lindsay's club goes a lot of different looks. They ch uh, change things up. They snunt. They blitz they got to keep a and off balance with those types of things. No, right now it's anybody's guess as to who's going to win this one. Will it be Texas A&M or will the Tigers of Mizzou upset the Aggies? We'll find out in just a moment. Coaches for these two teams, Bob Stoll on your right, R.C. Slocum. On your left, the Texas A&M coach, both these coaches in their fourth years and they know each other well. We'll talk about that more later on. A gorgeous day for football here in Columbia. The sunny skies, uh, temperatures are absolutely perfect for this kind of a game. 72 degrees, low humidity. The wind could be a factor. It's gusting out of the northeast, but as I mentioned, the skies are clear. These teams have only met a couple of times, and that was way back in the 50s. In fact, Mizzou has yet to score on Texas A&M. Those two teams, the scores of 12-0 and 28-0. So the Aggies are dominating in this brief series. And Missouri would just like to get on the scoreboard today. First, Texas A&M to kick off. Terry Venatulius to kick off with Jerome Madison back deep along with Mark Jackson. Jackson at the three. Finds a hole all the way up to the 25-yard line. The quarterback to start the game for the Tigers will be Phil Johnson, his junior campaign. Johnson with over 2,000 yards passing line. What a terrific player he has been, at least last year he was, Dave, and he's a guy that has tremendous athletic skills. 4-4 in the 40, good arm. He'll be out of the pocket a lot if he gets pressure. And he'll be splitting time today with Handy. They're trying to decide on a starting quarterback here at Mizzou, but so far they have not been able to do that. And the give is to Lyons, the sophomore out of Arlington, putting it to the Texas guys all the way up to the 38-yard line. 
One of the guys that Johnson will be throwing to a lot today will be number two, Victor Bailey. One of the premier receivers, not only in the conference, but probably in the nation. The pro scouts are in love with this guy. Great athletic ability, can leap too. And this line is going to have to block for Johnson, but Oski is a great one. Most consistent lineman, and uh, he's the most experienced guy on their, on their line. From the 38, first and 10. The give is to Cahill, breaks a tackle, and is thrown down at the 40-yard line. Defensively up front for the Aggies, Sam Adams can really put some pressure on you. What a physical player this guy is, Dave. Uh, he could, likes to throw those uh, offensive linemen around, and he has the strength to do it. Marcus Buckley, after <laughs> hampered by a little bit of arthritis, is back to form. Here's a guy that's in the mold of uh, guys like uh, LT and Derek Thomas. Those names are thrown around a lot, but Marcus Buckley is deserving of those comparisons. Frazier in the secondary already with three interceptions this year. He's one of the leaders in the nation in that department. Second down, nine yards to go. Quick drop for Johnson. Pass was intended for Holly, and it was thrown away. Third and nine now. And Missouri trying for their first third down conversion of the year. That's right. The Tigers were 0 for 11 on third down in their first game against Illinois. Something that they're going to have to correct in this game, and they get their first opportunity. This is what they don't want to be, third and nine. They'd rather have the thirds and one and two, but not this time. From the 39, Tigers need to get it. Up to the 48-yard line. Johnson is given time across the middle looking for Gardner. Pass was, I think, slightly deflected, and it's incomplete. And again, Missouri does not convert on a third down situation. Just a straight man-to-man -man coverage by a and You'll see that all day long. They have the athletes in the defensive backfield to put the pressure on their receivers and uh, cover them man-to-man. -man. Scott Villarreal, he dropped one last week on a perfect snap. Bobbles that one slightly and then gets off of a wobbly kick. It takes a Missouri bounce, though, and a and will just let it go. And it will roll all the way down to the 17-yard line. That's where AM will start their attack with their quarterback, Jeff Granger, a guy who tried out for the Olympic baseball team and decided to play football after he was cut from the squad. Yeah, he's got a guy, he's a guy that uh, they really have to get involved in this offense, as we said in the open. R.C. Slocum wants to go more to a pro-style attack and not to depend just on the run as much, and they're going to have to depend on Jeff Granger. There was a big, uh, in the spring uh, at Texas A&M, a number of quarterbacks were trying to win the position. Granger didn't even play in the spring, comes in the fall, and he's a starting quarterback. Now Granger, with that baseball career looming, decided to come back and play football again. Not even listed in their media guide. That's how sure Texas A&M was that he wasn't coming back. Hill has it, and he stopped after a minimal game. But Hill is absolutely a great one. Greg Hill, good speed. Uh, I mean, just a great runner. And it, what impresses me about Greg Hill, Dave, is he not only has the talent, but he's got the desire to win. And those two combinations usually mean success. And a quick snap. The ball goes to Rodney Thomas. Boy, there's a play right out of the uh, backyard, you might think. The ball was snapped sideways laterally and given right to Thomas and quick offense now for AM. Texas AM doesn't want Missouri to get their uh, defense set. That's where they're going on the quick no huddle. Third and one. Flag is down, slipping down. Credit one tackle to the Faroe Field. Hill slips down. We'll see what the flag is about as Hill slips down behind the line of scrimmage. We'll count tackles today for Faroe Field, and that's one for Don Faroe. Is that an official statistic? I think it should be. Offside. Defense. Now, but that will be negated as Texas A&M will get the first down. Let's quickly look at the Mizzou defense. Stacy Elliott in his senior campaign. He's a good one up front. The uh, linebackers, and they play these a little bit differently, but we'll be watching closely. Travis McDonald, McDonald who had his first interception last week, and in the backfield. More of his uh, regular position, you might say, is Maurice Benson. Benson has been playing the corner, but now what they call their rover, which is really a strong safety position. Slocum getting a break on that penalty. And the Aggies will have it. First and 10 now. The ball at the 31-yard line. Granger wide open is Matthews. Matthews breaks a tackle. Still loose on his feet across the 50 and slips down at the 43-yard line. Matt 
Murray finally brought him down, but Matthews broke a couple of tackles for a big game. You're going to see this all day long because those Missouri defensive backs are going to be playing off the receivers. Granger just goes to his right. They're in his own coverage, and then just a great individual effort by Matthews to get away from Kevin McIntosh and make all that extra yardage. A good play by Matt Murray to hustle in from his defensive end position to finally make that stop. But the Aggies are going now at the 43 of Mizzou. First down. Granger, quick drop, one hopper, incomplete. Pass intended for Harrison. That one never had a chance. And that's been the knock on Granger. He did the same thing against Stanford. He just doesn't get into a flow. Maybe he's still throwing it like a baseball. I don't <laughs> yeah, know. That was a sinker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's throwing the deuce. <laughs> And there you take a look at Don Lindsay, his first year at Mizzou, a tremendous defensive coordinator, great credentials. Comes with a tremendous resume, coached at USC, Georgia Tech, Alabama. He's made quite a change on this Mizzou defense. He's just not sure whether he's got the athletes to really make it as competitive as he wants to do. Lindsay told us he'll be doing it with mirrors this year trying to patch together this defense that was 105th in the nation a year ago. There's that sinker ball again. Harrison can't come up with it. And now it's third and 10 for the Aggies. Oliver is right there with Harrison. Good defense by Missouri. Missouri does play man-to-man -man in those last two. And uh, Granger's just not getting the ball to them. I don't think this ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Uh, possibly, but I, I just think it's coming off his hand uh, the wrong way, throwing that deuce. Granger started against Stanford, then was pulled out. Corey Pullig came in, then Matt Miller, and then back to Granger again. Offense is a concern at Texas A&M from the shotgun. Granger on the run, throws it away, incomplete. And Mizzou's defense holds a and m <laughs> crowd gets into it. They know the problems that this Missouri defense has had. Ranked 105th out of 106 Division I schools last year. So to see them stop a powerful offense like A&M. And Granger's on the bench. Not happy with the way he's thrown it so far. Davis to punt it away. Boots it high into the wind. That one's going to carry into the end zone and out of the end zone. And Missouri will get it back at their own 20-yard line. So Missouri gave up that one big pass completion to Tony Harrison. Actually, Ryan Matthews, who took it all the way down to the 43, but then it was three and out from Texas A&M from there. And with 11.54 to go in the first quarter, we still have no score. Welcome back to Columbia with Jim Ryan and Brian Nooner. I'm Dave Armstrong. The Missouri Tigers and Texas A&M have each had the ball one time. And uh, neither one have really been able to do much offensively. And it's a concern for both of these teams. Bob Stoll in his fourth year, ninth year as a head coach. He was previously at Massachusetts and also at uh, Texas El Paso. Uh, Bob Stoll would like to get this offense going, an offense that has relied so much on the pass. He would like to have a little more balance offensively. He needs to. I mean, they have not been able to run the ball very well. And Bob Stoll on the hot seat a little bit here. Columbia. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk, although Dan Devine, the new athletic director, or interim athletic director, says that he is his guy. Atkinson makes the stop on Cahill for about three or four yards on first down. Actually, Ryan Lyons, the sophomore out of Arlington, with his second carry. Lyons, one of about three guys they'll use at the tailback spot. Between Lyons, Freeman, and Jackson, they'll, they're interchangeable parts, those three. That's true almost all along the offensive, defensive, offensive line and defensive line of, of Missouri. They play a lot of players during the course of the game. Now the back split from the shotgun. Johnson on second and six. And the give is to Cahill. Big hole. Cahill on his feet across the 30. Pushes the pile ahead to the 38-yard line. Nice run, and as a matter of fact, Missouri, in such a surprise, they're running the football on AM so far. Just a direct snap, he hands it off, and a good block by, I think it was Badowski there, to spring. He got Marcus Buckley up the field, just shielded him, and that sprung Cahill. Now Victor Bailey with some good downfield blocking as well for Mizzou. So Cahill, that's what he did a week ago against Illinois, one of the leading rushers. 
There goes Lyons. He's picking up some huge chunks of yards on the ground as well. Maybe A&M, uh, Jim, a little bit surprised with this rushing attack. This is interesting because Missouri is just going right at A&M. They're not trying to go wide, not trying to be too fancy. They're just running some isolations. They're blocking down and let the fullback lead through on the linebacker, and they're creating big holes. I think they have big splits down there that's spreading out the defense. That's big splits between the linemen. Lots of room in there. Well, A&M had read all the press clippings about the throwing Tigers, and right now they're running the ball. Lions again breaks a tackle, a first down across the 50 inside AM to AM territory at the 48. Derek Frazier forced him out of bounds. We'll look at this one from the end zone and see uh, where the breakdown was for Texas AM. I can tell you one thing a missed tackle is what helped Lions pick up extra yardage there. There's the missed tackle by uh, Tackleman, I think. If he has him in the backfield, he stops him for a short game. Missouri has rushed for 42 yards already, only 72 yards rushing all last week against the Illini. There's Lyons again, again shedding a tackler and picking up about two or three on first down. Eric England held on, and uh, Lyons is doing the lion's share of the running, you might say, for I, Mizzou right now. I'm, I'm shocked. I really thought that Missouri was going to think we can't run against this A&M defense. We're going to have to put the ball up, but they're taking it right to them right now, and uh, it's got to build some confidence in these young men. Well, Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator for the Aggies, may be, like you, Jim, a little bit surprised that they're not going airborne more. Two receivers out wide to the right on second down and eight. And the give again to Cahill, spinning ahead across the 45 down to the 44-yard line where he's dragged down. And there you look at the defensive coordinator, Bob Davey. He's got the headset on there, shouting the instructions, trying to stop this rushing attack of the Tigers. I think with uh, Texas A&M, they're a uh, linebacker. So outside linebackers, uh, Buckley and Steve Solari, are coming up the field quite a bit and allowing the guards to just knock them out of the play. They're uh, coming too far up field. They've got to look down the line because that's where Missouri's attack is coming. There's another third down. Can Mizzou convert? They haven't yet this year. Third and six. Here comes the rush. They read it well. Bailey, he has the first down and more. Inside the 35, down to the 32. I just love this play, Dave. It's a, a, a wide receiver screen. The wide receiver just cuts in uh, behind the lineman. The lineman get downfield. It's, it's a tough play to execute because those linemen can be called for downfield before that ball gets in the air. But see all the blockers in front of him? Victor Bailey gets some extra yardage on his own, but he had a 10-yard gain before he was even hit. What a drive for the Tigers. Certainly a better start than last week at Illinois. Again, the quick hitter, and now the pitch back. Jackson's got it. He goes out of bounds. Missouri is known for this. They like to put all the tricks out of the bag. Jackson got it on the pitch from Solly. They call this the hook and ladder. The wide receiver just comes in, catches the ball, and then you have the back out of the backfield trailing. Everybody collapses on Sally. He pitches it. Maybe he's pitching a little too early. You see Buckley trailing. Well wow. executed by Missouri. Wow. Well, they talked about the defense doing it with Mears. The offense is as well. They get everybody to collapse on the receiver that catches the ball and leaves that uh, free man coming behind for the lateral wide open. Pick up a seven, second and three. Cahill looking for a hole. Tries to go outside, and Buckley says no, no. Buckley got a hold of him and stopped him in his tracks. We hear from Marcus Buckley for the first time, and I think Cahill would have done better to just hit that up inside there. Don't stutter step around there. They've had success so far going right at Texas A&M. I think they need to continue to do that. All right, now third and three from the 25-yard line. They need to get it inside the 22. Offside, it looks like the flags come. Pass is caught. Cahill has it down the sidelines, inside the 10, and out of bounds at the 9-yard line. Wow! <laughs> I'm sure this is going to be offsides against a and and Missouri will decline that penalty. Phil Johnson had a free play there, and he knew it. Cahill got some good downfield blocking from number 81, Kenny Holly, on the play. 
but he pulled Marcus Buckley offside. There you see the Missouri sideline saying, no, no, we're not taking that. Let's take that play to Cahill. He gets a hard cadence, and the quarterbacks are good. When you have a good pass rush like a Marcus Buckley and the Texas A&M Aggies, you draw them offside by that hard cadence. Hut, hut, hut. And see, he gets a little blocked by uh, Kenny Holly downfield. Terrific drive for Mizzou. First and goal for the Tigers. A team that has not led this year. A team that has lost six in a row. A team that is driving on the fifth-ranked Aggies and one of the best defenses in the country. The draw play to Cahill. Breaks a tackle. Cahill down to the three. Again, Badowski with a key block. He pulls out and hits the outside linebacker to make a, a hole for Cahill. And you got to give Missouri a lot of credit, Dave. But I tell you what, AM's missing tackles. There's Tackleman again, had a chance. Second and goal from the three yard line. Missouri, which trailed 24 0 last week. Look at this. On this drive, starting back at the 20 yard line, they're down to the seven. The pitch back. And down to the two-yard line goes Lions. Aaron Glenn stopped him shy of the end zone. And now one of the biggest plays for the Tigers so far this year. It is third and goal from inside the two. Missouri had so much success going down the field inside the tackles. And when they get down there, they decide to go wide. They had a two-tight end formation. Dave, I might look for a, a little play-action pass here, maybe a rollout, try to give uh, Johnson an option of running it in or throwing it in. Stahl calls the play from the I formation. Cahill and Lyons dotting the I. In motion goes Bailey. The give to Lyons. Touchdown! did not score a touchdown all last week. Three field goals, and now Missouri here in the first quarter goes 80 yards on the drive. Lions taking it in from the two. And just another straight-ahead power run over the right side of Missouri's offensive line. Texas A&M unable to stop the, the touchdown, and uh, got to say, it's quite a surprise, Dave, that Missouri's able to do this to Texas A&M, but they're on their home turf. And the turf is helping. This crowd here at Columbia is in shock right now. Lions has been uh, really the guy that has done it for Missouri on the ground, along with Cahill. Lions with seven carries in this game already for 35 yards. And, well, maybe a little optimistic there with an orange. <laughs> Are they the throwing field. oranges? <laughs> yeah, come on. It's a little early. I thought you only saw that in places like Oklahoma, Colorado, and Nebraska. Well, and they're going to throw some at Kansas this year. Why not? Hey, throw some oranges out there. It used to be in the old days they were throwing uh, bad tomatoes. Yeah. So why not throw some oranges? Missouri would be glad to have those thrown out. Jackie going for a school record. This would be his 80th point after, and it is good. He has the school record. He is 80 for 81 in his career. And Missouri is leading the fifth-ranked Aggies of Texas A&M 7-0. Wow. Here's a touchdown, Dave. Just a power run. They got Cahill leading Lions through. Everybody's on their ground. See the Texas A&M players? Missouri going real low, pancaking those Texas A&M Aggies. Good play. 6.15 to go in the first quarter, and Mizzou is surprising A&M. Welcome back to Columbia. This place is stunned somewhat as the Missouri Tigers, winless in their last six games, lead the fifth-ranked Aggies of Texas A&M 7 to nothing. An 80-yard drive for the Tigers results in that two-yard touchdown from Ryan Lyons, and down on the field is Brian Nooner. Dave, Missouri defensive coordinator Don Lindsay told me earlier this week the offense has to fire some shots if the Tigers are going to be successful. They have to keep the defense off the field. As you saw on that drive, they got some shots off, and I think the surprising thing was Missouri fired those shots on the ground. They normally shoot through the air. They did get some shots on the ground, 34 yards rushing 
They've thrown the ball for 57 yards. A lot of those are those little quick hitters, which is, Jim, really controlled passing. It's not going that Exactly. Going they deep. want to control the ball and just quick hitting passes that you know you can gain five, six, eight yards with. They don't have to hit the home run, although with Victor Bailey, they're capable of that. And we'll see if they try that on their next possession. Jackie kicking it off. Mickens has it in the corner. Mickens still on his feet, slicing through up to the 28-yard line. But the Tigers chewed up over five and a half minutes on that last drive, going 80 yards in 13 plays. Lions taking it in from the two, his first touchdown at Mizzou. That's ball control right there. And again, uh, I don't know if we can stress enough how surprising that is, but Missouri comes ready to play. Texas A&M may have uh, read their press clippings a little bit during the course of the week. Well, now Granger's going to have to try to get them to come from behind. That one pass completion to Matthews, he really made something of that, but he was 0 for 3 since then. And immediately they go to their bread and butter, Greg Hill. When they're down, they're going to go to Hill. That's what they're going to have to do. We'll take a look at this play again. Both teams doing something very similar. They're just running right through the middle. You see the... Uh, the lead you'll see the lead blocker that's uh, Cliff Grouse coming through and making a good bl block on the linebacker and that frees Cahill and then again Cahill yards after contact quite a few Benson finally brought him down but not after seven yards on the pickup Hill again this time he is stuck Earl Brooks was the first one through and then came a lot of guys in black shirts Earl Brooks, one of the men that Don Lindsay brought in to try to get more speed on this defense. He's a junior college transfer. Earl Brooks just breaking through the line. It looked like he was just through the uh, through the offensive lineman out of the way. It was just quickness, and that's what Missouri needs more of. He got through the line because of his quickness. And now third and five for AM. Granger has time to throw. His receiver slipped down. It was intended for Harrison. He slipped and the pass goes incomplete. And now Granger has missed his last four pass attempts. And it's three and out for Texas A&M. Do you have that official stat on the slips yet, Dave? Uh, again, the receiver slipped down on that one. Yeah, that's not a tackle. That's just a, a <laughs> slippage. Holly's back to get it for Mizzou. Waiting the punt of David Davis, the guy who played six-man football out in Western Texas. The last guy to do that successfully, as far as a Texas A&M player, was a guy by the name of Jack Pardee. And this one takes a Missouri bounce sideways and is down at the 26-yard line. But the Tigers still surprising the Aggies. That touchdown drive of 80 yards and then three and out for Texas A&M. And the Cadets, they're trying to bang the drum slowly. But so far, it's Missouri getting off to the quick start. I'm trailing Missouri. The Tigers 7-0 over the Aggies. And Brian Nooner, I'm sure R.C. Slocum not too happy with his team right now. Slocum came over to his offensive line and he didn't discourage him at all. He said, hey, stay together. This game is far from being over. You guys have got to get it together and start playing hard like you have done all season. And so uh, the composure's just uh, distorted a bit and they're trying to restore it. What's that like on the sidelines, Jim, when you fall behind early on a team you're expecting to beat? I think that uh, you can get into some mental lapses when you come into a game maybe expecting to beat a team, maybe expect too much out of yourself, and maybe you just relax just that little bit. And in college football, even against the team you're supposed to beat, that can be enough to put you behind. And I think it has to Texas A&M. The pitch back is to Freeman. Freeman cuts it back inside across the 35 to the 36 yard line and close to another first down. Patrick Bates finally brought him down. But interesting how often we're talking about the secondary of the Aggie defense that's bringing down those rushers. That's exactly right. On this play, I think the linebackers just overran it. Jason Atkinson gets too wide and, and uh, Lions just makes a great cut. And he, he knows how to make the cuts on these on this field. You see how he slowed down a little bit to make that cut? And, uh, excuse me, Joe Freeman, yeah, made the run. And, and you see how he slowed down to make that cut? I, I think that uh, other teams that come in here don't know that. So they might try to make that cut real hard, and it might not. Uh, and they, they slip down, whereas Missouri knows their field. And uh, maybe I'm stretching it, but I think that that's true. This is almost a coach's dream, isn't it? Second and about a foot. This is one Waist the coaches down. can play. Waist down. They can go deep on this and know that on third down, 
at least believe on third down that you can uh, make the first down. So on second and about a foot chance for them to try something and instead they just give it to Cahill and Cahill will have the first down for Missouri. That's certainly a much better start than last week when Missouri fell down 24 to nothing to Illinois in the first quarter was a nightmare. But the Tigers had a lot of composure came back and scored 17 unanswered points and a lot of the Tigers felt like the clock was their worst enemy at the end that felt like they could have beaten the Illini had the clock not run out. Freeman. Freeman brought down after a pickup of about four on the play. Finally making the stop outside was Reggie Graham with the sure tackle. Let's take a look at how these two teams square up as far as their offense and defense is concerned. Of course, you would expect AM to have the better numbers ranked fifth in the country. They certainly do, and their uh, total offense is, is really balanced, and that's what R.C. Slocum is really ge gearing for toward this year is a more balanced attack, whereas uh, Missouri, as you see, much better passing team than they are rushing, except today. Well, so far today, it's been a real good balance, and they're running it more. Cahill is hit hard by Jason Atkinson. Cahill pushed that pile forward just a couple of yards though and it's going to bring up third and about three or four. So far this season Texas A&M has been a team that has started off very slowly Dave. They've scored 33 of their 60 points in the fourth quarter. They started very slowly against Stanford. They started slowly last week against Tulsa. They were behind 6 three at the half. And they're down seven nothing right here. Missouri already with 75 yards rushing today. Remember what I said about them having only 72 yards all last week. Johnson, the quick hitter, in and out of the hands of Bailey. Incomplete. Missouri has done it with trapping plays. They're pulling a lot of guards, having their line, their uh, fullbacks lead through on the plays, and uh, they're really getting a lot of hats at the point of attack. Johnson was hit hard right after he released the ball to Bailey. Bailey shaking his head, thinking that was one he should have had. Villarreal to punt it away for Missouri. This is a boomer. Frazier all the way back to inside his own five. It's got to be a clip. And down at the 12, and flags come flying. That is going to be a clip against the AM Aggies. Cooler with a tremendous play on special teams. First of all, Derek Frazier makes a mistake by catching this ball inside his own five yard line. He's got to let that go into the end zone for a touchback. And then when he does come running it out, Texas A&M, as you see so often on special teams, when it's in the open field, Texas A&M player hits one of the Missouri players right in the back. It's definitely a clip. Call it a holding against wow. the Aggies, but still it's going to start AM back in a hole. See Derek Frazier going back. He's got to let that ball go. He catches it on the four yard line, almost slips down. If his knee touches there, he's down on the three yard line, but there's the clip right there as the Aggie player just pushing him in the back. Illegal use of the hands, I guess they call it when it's above the waist. Now Granger. His Aggies backed up in their own end zone. Down 7 0. Great crowd on hand here in Columbia. Expecting over 40,000 for this one. And they are enjoying what they are seeing so far. First and 10 for AM back at their own three yard line. Pick up of just a couple. Doug Carter falls forward for just two. John Watkins, the nose guard, makes the stop almost immediately. Watkins does a good job of coming off the uh, coming off the block of the of the center. Chris Dawson. Actually, Watkins on the guard. See how he just uses his hands to keep that offensive player away from his body. That's the way you teach it. That's the technique coaches love to see. Make the plays that way. Actually my fault. Cliff Gross was the man that carried the ball. Second down eight yards to go. Matthews goes in motion. And the give to Hill. Stopped at the two. Hunt came in and made a huge play. George Hunt, the defender.
defensive tackle came in and made a huge play for Mizzou. We'll look at it again from the end zone. You can see the Missouri players are not giving any ground. Oh, there's a, just a uh, swim move. <laughs> what a move that he, he uh, pulls that arm up through the arm of the offensive tackle and frees himself. That's just a, a textbook. That's two plays in a row you see just textbook technique swim by move. the Missouri. They call it a he swim move. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it was uh, Hill who was doing the backstroke on that one. And now Granger backed up in his own end zone, wants to go deep. This one too far. Intended for Harrison, about five yards in front of him. And it's three and out again for the Aggies. And the Tigers' defense is solid. Actually, Bob Stahl and Don Lindsay, if they keep this up, can run for beer together. <laughs> Bob still trying to get some excitement back in this Missouri program. It's been down for a while. This is and he's in the fourth year of his contract. He needs to make something happen. He's making it happen today. Almost blocked. Davis gets it off. Holly backs up to his own 40 and dives back ahead to the 48-yard line. For a very good punt by Davis with his foot on the back line. That, as you mentioned, was almost blocked by Jerry Wooden, who came in and just barely missed it. Bob Stahl and uh, Don Lindsay. As you know, Dave, they rotate so many players in. Last week they played 58 players in the first half. That's going almost three deep at every position if you count 22 positions. And that's a that's a lot of players playing. And Stoll wants to get his young guys experience. Here's a young guy getting some experience. Handy in a quarterback now. Hopping over the line is Freeman. Freeman breaks free for a first down at the A&M 41-yard line. Michael Hendricks finally brought him down, but again, we're talking about that secondary bringing down the rushers of Mizzou. And the reason is you see the fullback coming through and getting the linebacker on the ground. There's Marcus Buckley being held, but what an athletic move by Freeman to jump over. And uh, he's into the secondary before anybody gets a hand on him. Another first down for the Tigers. <laughs> Freeman wants this place to explode. There's the pitch back to Sali, the wide receiver, who's also a quarterback. He throws it downfield and incomplete. Bailey wants some kind of interference. Aaron Glenn also wanted the same thing. I think it would have gone the other way if anyway. Looked like Victor Bailey had a nice push going on Aaron Glenn. But Brian Sally, the backup quarterback, actually the third team quarterback, and another razzle-dazzle play. Missouri's been known to do this. But I tell you what, that's good coverage by Texas A&M. They did not fall for that at all. They knew that when number seven, Brian Sally, was in the ball game to not get off your receiver until you see him cross the line of scrimmage with the football. Andy, what he did last week against Illinois had a tremendous drive near the end of that game. Second down, 10 yards to go. Handy one hops it. That one see, intended for Freeman. Dave, I don't know about you. I, I don't like this move. I, I mean, they did so well with Phil Johnson going down the field. They score a touchdown early, and now they go to Jeff Hand. I think they stay with Johnson. He's got the hot hand, even though he didn't throw a lot of passes. I mean, he's leading that team down the field, and I just think it uh, breaks your continuity. And as you see, Jeff Handy short on that pass. Well, at Denver, where you played, uh, not a lot of quarterback controversy. There was no. one guy, right? There was one guy. Yeah, you knew who was going to line up under center unless he was hurt. Number seven, John Elway. And Handy comes over to the sideline. Timeout has been taken by Texas A&M. What do the uh, what do the quarterbacks give Missouri? What kind of different players are Johnson and Handy? I think they uh, are uh, very different players. As a matter of fact, Dave, you see, Phil Johnson has a lot of athletic ability. He runs a four four. 40. For a quarterback, that's unheard of. He gets out of the uh, pocket a lot. You'll see him run a lot. You haven't seen him do that yet today. Now, the, on the other hand, uh, Jeff Handy is a very heady quarterback. He's a guy that looks, sees the field, doesn't make mistakes. And as Bob Stahl said yesterday, he's a guy that's always going to find that open receiver wherever he is. He re can really read those defenses very well, and he'll hit him, the open receiver. With more on that uh, situation is Brian Nooner down on the field. Yeah, just adding to that, Jeff Handy, when he uh, sets up in the pocket, he does a fantastic job of checking off his his receivers now they've criticized Phil Johnson about doing that and like you said Handy's not as mobile but Johnson can make the big play even if he doesn't check off his receivers if no one's open he can take off and run and create it on the ground and you'll probably see that at some time during the day 
We saw Johnson's numbers. He's over on the sideline now. And it's Handy who is in on third and ten from the shotgun. Handy is given time, throws out a little screen. It's completed to Freeman. He's still on his feet to the 30-yard line and a first down. That ball was tipped, and Freeman had to wait for it. Good concentration by the sophomore from Richardson, Texas. I love this call. Texas A&M is in a zone. The receivers drive those Texas A&M defenders very deep, and that gives a lot of room for this call. It's a gut on a third and ten or third and nine, and uh, Missouri making it work. Their play calling has been outstanding today. First and ten for Mizzou at the 30-yard line. Freeman again. Interesting, too, that they bring Freeman in. We talked about how they brought Handy in for Johnson. It was Lyons who was running so well for Missouri, and they didn't hesitate at all to go to Freeman, who's done a good job. I know. It's tailback guy by committee for Missouri, as most of their positions are. Joe Freeman, listed as the starter, only got one carry last week. Well, what a difference a week makes. Last week at the end of the first quarter, Missouri trailed 21-0 to Illinois. Now, after one quarter of play, the Tigers are upsetting the fifth-ranked Aggies 7 to nothing. Sonny here in Columbia right now with Missouri leading Texas A&M 7-0 through the first quarter. And the Tigers are driving again. With Brian Nooner and Jim Ryan, I'm Dave Armstrong. And we welcome you to our Prime Network Big 8 Game of the Week with Missouri leading 7 to nothing. Jeff Handy and a quarterback in relief with Phil Johnson. Johnson guided the Tigers on an 80-yard drive earlier in the first quarter. But Ryan Lyons taking it in from the two-yard line. And already Missouri with seven first downs in this game. 91 yards rushing, 45 yards through the air. And as a team, the Tigers are five of nine passing. A&M with only one first down in this game so far. That's shocking. First quarter, one first down. Second down, seven yards to go for Missouri. In motion goes Holly. Handy dumps it off. Holly is the guy. Holly inside the 10 down to the eight yard line. Wow. <laughs> Bob Stoll and their offensive coaches, like their coordinator, Dirk Cotter. I mean, they're just they're just brilliant today. Look at it. They flood the zone. It looks like it's going to be a rollout. You see all the players. Holly's just biding his time. He's get, he's hiding in there and just slips out to the opposite side where there are very few defenders are left. Nice play by Reggie Graham to save a touchdown. Give this to Freeman. He dances ahead to about the six-yard line. That last play to Holly. That has to be a linebacker's nightmare. Right? Yeah, <laughs> you're you're flowing. You're reading the quarterback's eyes. He's looking to the left. You see about two or three receivers out in your zone, the area, and then somebody just slips back the other way, and you see all that green turf and one player standing there with the ball. It's no fun. <laughs> Well, especially no fun when they replay it on the on the film the next <laughs> week, right? Over and over and over well, again. They let you know about it. <laughs> Second and goal from the six-yard line for Mizzou. Hill will loan setback. AM looking like they want to come to the blitz. Missouri picks it up well. And he just dumps it into the end zone. Someone had a bad read there. Pass was intended for Solly, I think. Uh, Solly broke the other way, though. I don't know if he was trying to go up to Victor Bailey with the same type of play they had last week against Illinois that Handy actually did score a touchdown with, but just too much pressure there, even though it was a short drop. Now third and goal from the six. What a huge play this would be to get into the end zone again. Look for Victor Bailey to be on the receiving end of any pass. The draw play, and that's only going to get down to the four-yard line. They tried to mix up AM, but Buckley read it well. Marcus Buckley stops him on third and goal from the six at the four-yard line, and the field goal unit comes out for Mizzou. With a short field and only a few yards to work with, not sure that the draw is the right play, but they get three points here, ten-point lead into the second quarter. Not bad for Missouri. Hard to argue any play calls yeah. for the Tigers right now. Not they, so far. They have really been on target. And Jackie, who was one of three at Illinois last week, but that one was a 51-yarder. Getting back onside was A&M, and that one is good. Missouri adds to their lead. The Tigers have now scored 
27 straight points if you look back to a week ago. And the Tigers leading 10 nothing. Let's go down to the field to Brian Nooner. Hello. Yes, uh, uh, coming into the game, Missouri's offense had to set a goal. One of those goals was to avoid third and long. Now, so far, they've only had one third and long situation, a third and ninth. They did not convert. They punted. That was on the first series. Since that time, they've avoided it. Now, I want to ask Jim something. You're a defensive player on this A&M team. You play that aggressive style. How frustrated is it? Right, are, are they right now that they're keeping them off balance? I tell you, Brian, it's a good question because I think they're very frustrated right now. The thing that really throws a, pl a player and a defense off is when you don't know what they're going to do next. And I think that's what Missouri has Texas A&M. They're on their heels right now. They're saying, what's going to come at us next? They've thrown a lot of different plays at us, middle screens on third and long. They've got wide receiver screens, a couple trick plays that have worked. Uh, they're just on their heels, and there's not much you can do about that. They'll be starting to talk to each other on the sideline. Come on, let's do something about this. Let's get a turnover, and that would help a R.C. Slocum has fallen behind 10 nothing. This is the most his team has trailed this year. And right now just trying to quench his thirst and get his team going. R.C. Slocum with an outstanding record of 39 and 1 in his three plus years at A&M. Jackie to kick off for Mizzou with the win partially at his back. So to the corner of the end zone. Mickens has it. Mickens will run it out, and will he ever? Mickens hops over a would-be tackler and gets it up to the 36-yard line. Jackie was the guy that came in, and he had to hop over the kicker, and he gets it up to the 36. You see the Tigers again using up almost three minutes, going 44 yards, and a 10-play drive. That's a pretty good drive at about 4.4 per clip, and the 21-yard field goal from Jackie. Jackie now two points shy of moving into third place in the Missouri career scoring charts. And Granger, who has had a rough start for the Aggies, will bring him out again. He knows he's got to get something going for his team right now. He's got to hit a couple little passes or get Greg Hill in the open field. And they spot the ball at the 39. Missouri showing blitz. And Granger to a wide open Shore. Shore pulling. A tackler with him across midfield to the 45-yard line. Yeah, I've, al I've always known that uh, offenses copy each other. I just didn't know they did it on consecutive plays. Here you see Texas A&M with just a little bootleg. They get the flow all going to the right side, and Chris Shorp, a favorite target of Granger, by the way, is able to slip out and get some open field. Madison hanging on for dear life, but the second first down of the game for A&M. Much doing. You know that Missouri is going to be very well aware of where number 27 Greg Hill is today. Greg Hill was off to a slow start this year. Uh, didn't have a, an out outstanding game. As a matter of fact, at one time in the Stanford game, AM had rushed 20 times for 20 yards, averaged one yard mm -hmm. per rush. Uh, got off to a slow start uh, against Tulsa, but uh, excuse me, Tulsa was his first time that he had over 100 yards. 125 yards against the Golden Hurricane last week. TU, a team that upset AM a year ago. Will Missouri pull off the same feet? Right now, Hill is thinking, mm, my goodness, as Stacy Elliott comes up and makes a huge play. A loss of three, and it's going to be third and ten again. What's surprising is that Missouri is not just getting people free, but they're but they're uh, playing off blocks using great technique, even when they are blocked. And there's Stacy Elliott. Gets off the block of the guard who was pulling out to try to get him upfield and makes a tremendous play. This reminiscent of the Stanford game when AM was only two of 16 on third down. Will they convert here? Big hit on Shorp by Jerome Madison, and he'll be shy of the first down. And now the decision time for AM. You're down 10 0. The ball is resting at the 37 yard line. It's fourth and two. Do you go for it? I think they would. I mean, you got a, an AM offense. Is supposed to be able to get about two, three yards anytime they touch the ball. You're down 10 to nothing. You need something to spark your team. You know that your defense is good. Even though they're not been stopping Missouri a whole lot so far in this game, you got to rely on that. It looks like AM will, and they'll go for it. Don Lindsay knows this is a big momentum spot in this game. Fourth and two, and AM is going. Watch 
Watkins is going crazy over there. He's looking like he was signaling for a timeout. Flags are down. He was pointing into the end zone. I'm not really sure what Watkins was doing. Maybe a delay of game. Ah, he was pointing at the play clock that had run out. That's what it was. The, now they'll have to punt it. It's fourth and seven. Things are starting to unravel for the Aggies. It took too long to make the decision whether to go for it on fourth down. That's <laughs> and, a coaching error there. And it was Watkins who pointed it out to the officials. <laughs> now these players are very well aware of pointing things out to the officials. This is the place of the famous fifth down game. There you go. You are in charge of counting the downs, aren't you? You betcha. I was here for that game. Yeah. Good punt. Missouri's going to let it go and hopes it bounces into the end zone, but it doesn't, and it stopped at the six-yard line. A great punt by Davis. Davis has been really the lone bright spot for AM so far today. And with 10.31 to go in the first half, Mizzou leads by 10. Missouri leading 10-0 over the fifth-ranked AM Aggies, and let's go down to the field for Brian Nooner's report. I'll tell you what, Dave, uh, the Texas A&M receivers just came off along with uh, Jeff Granger, the quarterback, and they talked to the offensive coordinator. They were saying, hey, they're man-to-man -man defense. We have no time to get our routes done. They're in on them too tight. Granger says, I don't have any time to, uh, to throw at all, so it's definitely causing problems, a problem that you thought the Texas A&M defense was going to cause Missouri's offense. Yeah, no question about that. He's exactly right. Texas A&M is the one that is known for uh, tight man-to-man -man covers. You have the athletes in the backfield to do that, and uh, they're not able to. They're not able to loosen it up on the ground either. A&M only 12 yards rushing on eight rushing attempts. Again, uh, the Missouri players just stacking it up. Getting uh, A&M is able to get no push on offense uh, from their offensive line on the Missouri defensive line, and MU just doing a great job of getting off those blocks and making plays. Well, Missouri now backed up near their own end zone. First and ten from the six. Andy still in a quarterback. And the give is to Mark Jackson. He lost the ball. And he lost the ball? Wait a minute. The referee They're says saying now he was down. AM was jumping around like crazy thinking they had recovered a fumble. And now they're saying the play was ruled dead. Another isolation play, tried to get the fullback on the linebacker. This time, it looks like Jackson, I think, defeats that block. And that ball definitely comes out after he hits the ground. That's a good call. The ground cannot cause a fumble. Second, though, a loss of two, second and 12. And Cahill rolls forward to give them a little bit more breathing room up to the seven yard line but it's going to bring up third and nine Tackleman making the stop for the Aggies. Dave you can see Texas A&M starting to make some adjustments to what Missouri is throwing at them. You can see their outside linebackers are not rushing up the field as quick as they were early in the game. They're looking for the guards to come kick them out and it might be able to open up Missouri's passing game just a little bit more to slow down the rush of those outside linebackers. Third down a long eight a short nine. is reading it right now up to the nine yard line as we get on to Brian Nooner. All right, uh, in that last offensive series, Missouri had a big wideout. We'll get back to him a little bit later, but his name is Mike Jadlow, number 29. He's a converted um, defensive back who's now playing wide receiver. This kid is six foot five, so he presents a very big target for the Missouri quarterbacks. And like I said, we'll probably see more and hear from him more in the game. but a good one that backs Frazier all the way up to his own 35 and he's down there. There's another tackle for Faro Field. Mark it down. And Pooler, excuse me, it's Pooler who's doing the punting now for the Tigers. Well, A&M comes into this game with uh, a lot of players who have very much experience but very much youth as well and R.C. Slocum talks about his young Aggies. One of the things that concerns you of course is going on the road for the third time in four weeks with a young team out of the 89 scholarship players 67 of these youngsters are either in the freshman or sophomore class and uh, that concerns you again playing a road game and uh, playing against the team we'll start two seniors on our on our team. 
and uh, Missouri has quite a bit more experience than we have. Those two seniors both on defense Marcus Buckley being one and the other one being Derek Frazier. <laughs> That's got to scare other Southwest Conference teams a little bit. You see an A and A and N team is so talented and uh, so young. Most of them are from Texas too. Only well, two players on this squad not from the Lone Star State. They would call every guy that you uh, call on the field. He's from Texas. You'd only be wrong twice. That's right. <laughs> and those guys are third stringers. That nice saves on their recruiting budget doesn't it. Granger. He finds Cliff Gross who slips down another tackle for Furrow Field at the 36 yard line. That's about the original line of scrimmage. Second and 10. But that's got to give Granger a little bit of confidence. Here he is rolling to his right. And uh, as a left hander, that's the toughest way to go. He makes a good pass, good catch, but there's the slip. And uh, again, Texas A&M at a disadvantage on the Furrow Field. Clock moving under eight minutes to go in the first half. Second down and 11 yards to go. Ranger straight back with time rifles one in there and there is that caught no indication saying another no. saying incomplete that call came late pass was intended for Ryan Matthews he thought he caught it Jason Oliver was there on the coverage and it was incomplete he may have had his hands on it and the ball and his hands hit the ground at the same time it looked like from up here we'll see it on the replay and uh, Granger guns the ball Boy, it's hard to see. I, I think that he caught the ball. Granger saying he had that ball. Well, he didn't, though, He's according the to the skins. official. Granger now 4 of 10, passing for 49, or actually 55 yards. But he's got a complete one here on third and 11. Pass is caught. What a rifle to Ryan Matthews, and that time he hangs on for a first down near midfield. Again, Missouri just jumping in the face of the uh, Texas A&M receivers. They're covering man-to-man -man all over the field. Ryan Matthews was going deep and uh, saw his quarterback had little, uh, had trouble seeing anybody downfield, just came right back on the sideline and made a good catch. He made a good good move to get away from his man-to-man -man coverage. And Granger, you can see that strong arm why he has set new Texas A&M records as a pitcher throwing strikeouts. He has the strikeout record at A&M. And the give is to Thomas, and he's forced out of bounds after minimal gain, if any. Maurice Benson read the run well. Maurice Benson, he plays off the block of Jeff Jones. Jeff Jones starting in the place of uh, injured John Richard. We see Jeff Jones here. He's going to pull out. He's going to block whoever he sees showing up, whether it's the outside linebacker or, in this case, the rover. Maurice Benson just gets his hands on him and, again, good technique and makes the play. I don't know what Missouri's done between this week and last week, but their technique is just outstanding. Really, it's from last week's second quarter on uh -huh. and this week. They, you know, they, they just have played so well. Granger gets rid of that one somehow. I don't know how he did it. But there was still no gain to Short. And a flag is down in the backfield. Granger. Call roughing the passer? Granger had someone draped all over him when he released the ball. Oh. It might be a hold. It is a hold against AM. I think Tim Burke is the one complaining. I, I got held. I got held. Here he comes right up the middle. He's untouched. Oh, he's, I, he's mad at himself because he didn't get there. Ranger just made a nice athletic move to buy himself a little more time as Burke came untouched. Holding, offense, decline, third down. They're going to hmm, instead take it down. Instead of taking that uh, extra yardage, instead of making it second and 20, they want to have it third and 11. Well, Stoll see wants that. the ball back quick. You don't see that happen very often. Mm -hmm. Coaches will... Usually just that's an automatic. That's a no brainer. Send them back. We'll see if this pays off. Oh, newfound confidence in this Tiger defense. <laughs> Third and 11. Granger audibleizing at the line. Batted down. Incomplete. Tech, Texas A&M 
And the ball proved to be a successful one as Travis McDonald came in and batted that one away. Wow, what a start by Mizzou in this game. Missouri throwing everything they can at Texas A&M. Travis McDonald, the inside linebacker, he's going to come into your picture from the right side. Boy, you get some height. Nice play. Just plays off the block of the fullback there. And Holly waiting for it will let it go and into the end zone. And so Missouri will get it back on their own 20 yard line. And Missouri with 6.04 to go is giving AM some of their own medicine. They are shutting the Aggies out. Missouri had not scored on Texas AM in the two previous games, and now they've turned the tables. Now these young fans enjoying the Missouri Tigers lead over Texas AM, 10 0. Quarterback for Missouri is Phil Johnson comes back through that revolving door and back out to QB for the Tigers. Maybe he can spend a little more time on the field if he continues to uh, impress as he has. But both quarterbacks have played well. Can I almost understand Bob Stoll's dilemma and who do you play? But I think you just Dave have to choose one and go ahead and go with him. And then uh, you know late in the third quarter if the guy just hasn't performed, then you then you go with your uh, your. Back. But uh, I, we got the sense in yesterday and talking to you, so he wants to make that decision. He, he just, wants to get that over with. That's exactly right. He just says neither of the quarterbacks has been outstanding enough to earn the job, yet neither has been uh, bad enough uh, to take himself out of the picture. And both these quarterbacks today are outstanding enough to want that job. And now still is going to be faced with a different decision. Now, right now, the decision for Missouri is to try to get that offense kick started again. Johnson almost lost the snap. And that play was kind of busted from the start as Jackson got only a yard. Let's take a look at the, how these teams compare up front. This is always the tail of the tape is interesting to see how things are. And offensive lines are always bigger than defensive lines. Don't look at that so much. But I think they, they uh, compare favorably, actually. I don't think there's a whole lot of difference between the two or, you know, one is uh, so much uh, heavier or bigger or, uh, than the other. They compare pretty equally, I would say. Second and ten. Still at the 20. Jackson dancing through, busting up to the 26 yard line. And that's going to bring up third and four for Missouri. Clock is rolling near the five minute mark, and it's 10 0 Missouri. We welcome those of you watching us on Texas Pay Per View. With Brian Nooner and Jim Ryan, I'm Dave Armstrong in a sun-drenched day in Columbia, Missouri. And very sunny for these young Tigers. Big third down for them right here. They want to hold on to this ball as the clock winds down in the second quarter. Johnson is given time, dumps it off to Cahill. He has the first down and more to the 36. Missouri's game plan is superb. It today. sure is. We'll take a look at this. Texas A&M does not come after Phil Johnson, but see the linebackers? They just drop off. The tight end clears them, and then just Cahill slips in between them, underneath them. He's just enough for the first down, and that's all they want. They don't want big hitters. They want to just keep the ball moving down the field with first downs, and the, you're right. Their play calling has been brilliant. First and 10 for Mizzou at the 36-yard line now. Johnson still has it on play action and picked off. Picked off by Aaron Glenn. Aaron Glenn with his third interception of the year. The pass was intended for Victor Bailey and Glenn picked it off. Aaron Glenn makes a nice break on this ball. They're in man to man. And what happens is Phil Johnson holds this ball too long. He waited till Bailey got into his break. He should have let ball, the ball go earlier. And Bailey's already in his break. And Glenn read it. He's reading the quarterback's eyes. There it is. He breaks on the ball very well. And that's something that a lot of the AM defensive backs do very well. And now we'll see if that rejuvenates the AM sidelines. The give is to Hill and his first big run of the day. Hill. yards after contact you, you know coaches always like to look at a guy and not just to uh, see how well he runs the ball but when he's hit can he make that extra yardage Bobby Humphrey from the Broncos and now from the uh, Dolphins was that type of runner here comes Hill look at it. he's hit one two three four five six seven 
I mean, he's taking about, oh, 15 yards. Hill guys again. On his back. Hill stays on his feet again down to the 21. Hill on that last rush went 21 yards, and up until then, he had been held to four yards on six carries. And that uh, pickup of about four on the play make it five down to the 21 yard line. You talk about a momentum switch. Man, that interception by Glenn took the air out of the sails of the Tigers. And now Tigers defense needs to hold here with 334 to go. Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator, watching Cliff Gross get stuffed at the line. Of Toledo now trying to get his team kickstarted here. Offensively, that has been the story for AM as far as the negative column is concerned this year. They're concerned about an offense that's only averaging 20 points a game. Last year, they averaged over 33 a game. And a big third down play here. Third and five. Granger, incomplete. Hill had it for a second and then dropped it. I'm not sure he'd have made it anyway. You I don't think take anything, close. I don't think you'd take anything away from the athletic ability of Hill, but Missouri had read that perfectly. Andre White was right out there covering Hill. Granger wants to go to Hill right away. He's just on a little swing pattern. And even if he catches the ball, Mizzou had that read perfectly. They had three or four defenders with that. And the surprising thing is that AM had no blockers in front of Hill. I don't know if he the uh, couple guys just forgot to get out there or what. Terry Venetulius from the 28, a 38 yard attempt. A little wind right now. Kick is up, and it is good. And AM is on the board with 2.49 to go in the second quarter. A 38 yard field goal from Venetulius. He hit a 44 yarder earlier this year. And AM now gets on the board but still trails Missouri 10 3. The Tigers still leading Texas A&M, but the Aggies converting on that interception by Aaron Glenn with a 38-yard field goal, and it's a 10-3 score now as A&M gets on the board. The scoring drive uh, didn't take long. I have to give credit to the Missouri Tiger defense as they held tough after that interception and after a long 21-yard run by Hill, and the scoring drive didn't go very far for A&M and it resulted in the 38 yard field goal. Missouri's defense does have to feel pretty good about that. They have been playing very well all day. It's something that can really get in your mind as a turnover. You'll start trotting onto the field saying uh oh OK we got to hold and when you do you feel pretty good about it. They've got to have confidence right now. Renatulius to kick off for Texas A&M with 249 to go before the intermission. This one goes to Jackson in the end zone. He bobbles it and then downs it there. And Missouri again will start at their own 20 yard line. And I think right now the thinking of the Tigers is let's not blow our three lead. Let's go into that locker room with the seven point advantage. I don't think they can get too conservative here. There's plenty of time 249 to go in the half. Mm -hmm. And if you noticed in their last two series uh, when they were down about to score they ran a draw play on a third down and then when they were in their own territory they ran a draw on third down. I think a little too conservative. Hey, maybe they just get, you know they want to eat up some clock and don't give the ball back to A&M before halftime. Johnson stays in at QB for Missouri. And now from the shotgun. Like they're not going to be conservative. Now the give, though, is to Lions. Lions does a good job switching hands with the football and busts it only for about a yard on the play up to the 21. Ray Mickens was there defensively for AM. You're not going to get too much on AM if you try to go wide on a slow developing play like that one was. When he went into the shotgun, I was thinking trick play again. <laughs> you just always have to watch that for Missouri. How many more tricks do they have? I don't this know. <laughs> I'll bet they have more, though. 
Johnson rolling out. Buckley giving chase. Johnson pass intended for Holly off his fingertips and out of bounds and Frazier might have gotten a hand in on that one as well. Phil Johnson's got to be very careful right now. One interception on the last series. Don't force things in. It was good defense by Derek Frazier. One of the best man to man covers on this team. I think once again Johnson had Holly open a lot earlier. By the time he, he threw the ball Derek Frazier was on top of him. And I think if there's a knock on Phil Johnson. It is the fact that he does with his athletic ability try to force the action a little bit. Mm -hmm. See the comparison between the two quarterbacks pretty similar numbers. Johnson's been in a little bit more in this first half. Again they go to that draw play and there goes Freeman. He is free for the first down up to the 35 yard line that time it caught the Aggies by surprise. <laughs> Well they continue to be conservative and keep the ball on the ground on third down but again watch A&M's defenders they're upfield see where Badosky makes that block it's way in the backfield and that gives Freeman a natural hole and he's down into the secondary once again. So a first down a clock now moving at 147 to go in the first half. And now the pitch back to Lions. Lions picks up about three yards on first down up to the 38. You know Dave I think that we should give a little credit to the Missouri offensive line as uh, we've been talking about some of the stunts that uh, A&M has been running and uh, some of the uh, offensive plays that Missouri has been running. They haven't been able to do it without the execution of that offensive line and we've already seen several key blocks by Mike Badosky number 79 the right guard. Freeman now has rushed for 44 yards. Well, the rushing attack for Missouri today has been outstanding. Wow, coming from behind was Sam Adams. Would he wrap up Cahill in a hurry? And now one minute to go before the intermission. And if you're Missouri on this third down play, you might be conservative here and let that clock wind down. Oh, you've got to. You're not really in scoring position, so you want to make sure that the, you don't give the ball. I'm a little surprised. Why isn't Texas A&M calling timeout on a third down? At least give your offense a chance for one or two plays. I think maybe uh, RC's got that speech ready. <laughs> and he just wants to get into that locker room and make it. And Johnson will put it up and they will not be conservative. Throws it up and it's like a punt if it's intercepted and it is incomplete. Bailey was there. Glenn was there looking for his second interception and it is incomplete with 23 ticks on the clock here in the first half. Victor Bailey with outstanding speed and great leaping ability did a good job to prevent the interception here but Aaron Glenn once again he's all over Victor Bailey like a cheap suit. <laughs> and Kyle Pooler into punt again for Missouri. For the Eric Frazier is back there to get it. Pooler's done a great job of punting. That one bounces out at the nine yard line. Pooler has won himself a punting job I believe. <laughs> that one had a flight attendant on it didn't it. I think they were serving drinks anyway. Fifteen seconds to go here in the first half and you got to figure A&M is just going to sit on this one and let's go to the locker room down seven. Well I thought they might try to get the ball back with a little over a minute to go in that third down situation and call time out because they had the momentum going with them at least they had gotten on the scoreboard and uh, maybe wanted to try to get on the scoreboard one more time before halftime but R.C. Slocum decides we're going to go in and talk about it. We've got a lot to talk about. Missouri will have a lot to talk about as well as it looks like they're going to lead. They are going to lead the fifth ranked Aggies of Texas A&M at the half. And this crowd here in Columbia is appreciative of the Tigers effort. The Missouri Tigers run off the field at halftime scoring the first 10 points of this game and they lead the fifth ranked Texas A&M Aggies 10 to 3 at the intermission. This is a shocker so far. It certainly is. Missouri uh, about a 16 or 15 point underdog 
is not expecting to. What's shocking about it is not just that Missouri has the lead right now, but how they've got it, and that's running the football and playing outstanding defenses, the two very things that they really have not done very well in the past. And let's go down on the field to Brian Nooner, who is with R.C. Slocum. Coach, uh, coming into this game, were you really surprised that Missouri came out running the ball as much as it did? It did? No, I think Missouri's done a good job with mixing it up. You know, they've mixed the run up with the, the, the screen passes and uh, they've tried to keep us all balanced to stay away from our blitz. I think they've done a nice job calling plays. As far as your offense goes, it seemed like you came out of the locker room looking to establish the pass. Was that the goal? No, it really wasn't. We came out, we tried to run the ball. They've got an eight man front there. They're stunning and uh, giving us some tough looks. So we, we got it. We're forced into a passing situation. So I mean, that's really what we expected. Okay. Anything you got to do in the second half different? Well, we got to catch some balls and throw it, throw and catch some balls and uh, get them to ease up a little bit on the defensive pressure. We've had guys open and haven't been able to get the ball to them. We got to do that and come back and uh, continue to try to run the ball as well. All right. Thanks, Coach, for joining us. Let's send it back up top to Jim and Dave. Thanks a lot, Brian. Well, Missouri leads 10. And three at the break. And stick around for halftime. We'll be visiting with Gary Kubiak, who's a coach at AM. We'll also talk with the new athletic director at Missouri, Dan Devine. A look at this as uh, Missouri Tigers really did a good job on the ground and also with the, some quick hitters. Ron L. Cahill with a nice run here. And again, you see Badoski with the great block as he gets Buckley as he tries to come up field. You see what I'm saying about the Texas A&M coming up the field a lot with their outside linebackers. They changed that a little bit later. Touchdown run, I believe. Cahill leading the way. See where Atkinson is? He's back in the end zone, and Missouri's just knocking them off the ball. That made it 7-0, and the Tiger defense was also stiller. I think this is the uh, Travis McDonald, Travis with McDonald as he blocked it. Again, a nice athletic move. That's the thing about Missouri. They're not known for having great athletes. Hey, they're playing off blocks, they're getting through people, and they're just making athletic plays that uh, maybe a little bit over their head. And here's a nice play by Maurice Benson. He plays the run very well. Maurice Benson, he's the rover, and we taught, said before the game that if Missouri's going to be successful, Maurice Benson has to be making plays up around two and three yards from the line of scrimmage. That time he did it. Greg Hill did not have a great first half, but this was a nice run. This is the one of the few times that he got some running room, and you have to give some credit to the Missouri defense. And also, you got to put a little onus on the Texas A&M offensive line. They have to play better in the second half, but look at Hill go after he's got three guys draped all over him. Now that took him down to the 20-yard line, but they could go no further and had to settle for this 38-yard field goal. I, that may end up being a key play in this game if it comes down to be a close game in the fourth quarter. The fact that Missouri held after a turno turnover, they've really got some momentum on their side. Now stats-wise, look at these. I mean, this is not a misprint that it's 10-3 Mizzou. They have dominated this game. They sure have. I mean, 105 yards total offense for a and is almost unheard of. But on the other side, but that's just the key stat. You can look at everything you want. But Missouri is dominating the line of scrimmage. They're getting the yardage and not giving it up. And the time of possession is in their favor, too. Now let's go down on the field. Brian Nooner now is with a very happy Bob Stahl. All right, he's not quite ready yet. So, uh, again, as you analyze these statistics just a little bit, you have to be if you're Texas A&M concerned that your offense has not been able to get anything going. Yeah, I mean, they have to just go out and start blocking and tackling. I think they got to get back to the basics. When they're in the locker room there, I mean, there's not a lot of yelling and screaming going on, but I think that Texas A&M may have had a little bit of a mental letdown coming in this game. They've already played three tough football games. Thought they might have a breezer here at Mizzou. It's not turning out to be that way, and I don't know if you can just turn that emotion on and off. And second half, hopefully they'll be, they'll be able to turn it on. What happens in a locker room at halftime when you're down and you're favored to win a game? What's going on in there? I think defensively they're telling the guys, don't be on your heels. Missouri's throwing a whole lot of things at you. Forget about their trick plays. Just throw that out of your mind because they're not, if they get a couple of those, so be it. But forget about those. Just play your keys. You know where the ball's going when you see the linemen go a certain way. You know what their tendencies are. Play them and then just play hard. Tackle better, too. All right, we'll come back in just a moment. Can Missouri keep this up? That's the question that everybody here in Columbia is asking. The Tigers leading the Aggies at the half. 10-3. We'll be back with a second half in just a moment. The job defensively for this Tiger team they really have some growl this year, Jim. Uh, you know, this, these Tigers last year were ranked 105th in the nation out of 106 teams in total defense. Don Lindsay just comes in, as we said, at halftime. 
I think he's changed the attitude here a little bit. He's got players believing. He made so many changes. They had 12 position changes, brought in three or four junior college transfers to try to add some speed uh, against a team like Texas A&M. That's certainly a must to have some speed on defense. But I think mostly he's got them believing in themselves and believing in his system that is going to stop people. And uh, he, he was pretty confident as we talked to him yesterday that when you look at the Texas A&M offense, that they don't do anything outstanding. They're pretty basic. They just zone block a lot and, and just kind of straightforward. And he says, you know, we can stop that type of offense. And they have so far. You know, the offense is directed by Bob Toledo. And Bob right now trying to figure out some. Look at him just shaking his head like, come on, we got to get it going here in this second half. 105 yards total offense for us is absolutely unthinkable. Bob Stoll trying to beat a guy that he broke into the college ranks with, R.C. Slocum. Brian Nooner will tell you more about that a little bit later. R.C. Slocum and uh, Bob Stoll started their coaching careers at Kansas State as grad assistants. And they have stayed in touch through the years. Missouri to kick off to start the second half. Jeff Jackie to boot it away. This one a line drive that bounces at the 20. And it's taken by Mitchell. Mitchell trying to break outside, bumps around like a pinball, and is hauled down at the 27 yard line. And that's where the Aggies will come on the attack again. Granger under attack in that first half will start at quarterback again. And Granger, his first half numbers, not really what he was hoping for. Certainly not. And he knows that he's got to do something to spark his team. Certainly, Greg Hill is capable of doing that. But I think Granger's the man as the quarterback. He's the leader. And you have to look for Texas A&M to get something on the board or at least something sparked offensively early in this half to get some momentum on their side. Granger, play action, has plenty of time. Rifles it behind his intended receiver, Tony Harrison. <laughs> well, we, we start the second half as we ended the first, or actually as we started the first, Jeff Granger missing the first couple of attempts he had in the first half. And here, as we begin the second half, he misses again. He had an open receiver. He just lowballed it. That was a slider. <laughs> He's thrown a couple of sinkers and yeah. now a slider. He's got all the pitches, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. At the full range. And right now the Aggies hope he throws some strikes. Second and ten. Granger wants to throw again. Look out from behind. He's hit as he delivers and it's incomplete. Earl Brooks was chasing him. Pass intended for Cliff Gross and he couldn't hang on. Earl Brooks one of those junior college transfers we had talked about he's an inside linebacker but you see him coming from the outside avoids the block that's the speed that Missouri wants to get on their defense nice play pressures Granger into an incompletion a little bit harder to rush the left handed quarterback coming in from that side you want to go to his blind side and that's not his blind side coming in from the right side there but I see Texas A&M rolling Granger out to his right a lot and that's a tough throw to come back and throw to that side when you're a left handed quarterback man did you see that one of seven on third down in the first half and here it is third and ten not the way Texas A&M wanted to get started pass is caught Harrison has it and he's loose. Harrison going for the end zone. Harrison will have a touchdown for Texas A&M. Wow. Touchdown, Texas A&M. No flags. A lot of high five and going on the Aggie sideline. Maybe a big sigh of relief. Okay, we can do something. But Granger finally on the money. He had some pressure. Somebody from uh, Missouri came untouched up the middle. I think it was Earl Brooks once again. And Harrison really made that go after breaking the tackle, and he took off. Harrison, their fastest receiver, wasn't about to be caught. Venetulius to tie things up at 10. And now not the way Missouri wanted to start the second half. And we are tied at 10. Missouri on the first two plays stuffs A&M and then Don Lindsay's defense gives up the long touchdown from Granger to Harrison. Well as you see Granger dropping back he looks like he's honed in on Harrison all the way. He lets it go. Now it's not a sin to get beat and have your guy catch the ball. But Jason Oliver misses the tackle and that is a sin. You can't do that. And uh, that boy that allows the long touchdown run by Harrison not about to be caught. 73 yards for Harrison. And right now Jason Oliver wishing he had made the tackle and we are tied. 
Hey, Harrison with his first touchdown of the year has tied things up for AM. 10 10 now with Missouri. And the question, Jim, is uh, what happens from here? That's a good question. Uh, will Missouri fold? You know, last week as they got way behind of uh, Illinois, as you take a look at Gary Kubiak, he's got to be sighing a sigh of relief as uh, his offense gets on the ball, uh, gets on the board with a quick hitting touchdown. But last week against uh, Illinois, Missouri did not fold in the second half under tremendous pressure to do so. We'll see if they can hold up the second half today. Tullius kicks it deep, and it's going to be brought up by Jackson. Jackson may be trying to kickstart his own team and maybe should have stayed in there and let him start at the 20 because now A&M really has the momentum going. Ball is stopped at the 13 and the scoring drive doesn't take long when you get one that goes 73 yards. Exactly what A&M needed to do come out and uh, do something quickly in the second half and they did it. Phil Johnson's going to start the second half as he did the first. Now Johnson probably not happy with his numbers as well even though they led 10-3. Johnson I'm sure would tell you I should do better than four of ten. And there you see that A&M's defense can really turn it up a notch in the second half and they are doing that right here. Fumbled. And it goes out of bounds. They're saying now the ball is dead at the 16 yard line. Missouri doing what they can. I don't know, it's starting off just with a little run. Lions going left. Eric England is right there. He's doing all he can. He's got to break it to the outside, but against the speed of AM, there's nothing there. I think that ground caused the fumble. And that ball uh, goes out of bounds, but it will stay with Missouri as Davey wants his defense now to stuff Mizzou right here. Look out. That pass is caught by Solly, but he is stopped for a loss. And a flag goes down. Might have a face mask on Brian Solly. It certainly looked that way. Marcus Buckley came untouched in Phil Johnson's face. That's something he doesn't want to see. Mm -mm. Right here. There, there, right there. There it is. That'll help Mizzou's cause. That's an inadvertent face mask, I would imagine. Our referee is Tom Allers from Des Moines. Face mask, defense, five yards from the previous spot. Inadvertent. But a big break for Missouri. Instead of third and long, it's going to be second down over again and second and about three. And penalties have hurt AM. I think this will be the real test of courage for Missouri yeah. after that touchdown by the Aggies. Can they sustain a drive of their own a little bit? They've got to be patient, and I think they have to get it all back right now. Just a couple first downs and a little ball control would certainly help. Not much doing for Lions. He's going to be held short of the first down, and this is a different <laughs> Aggie defense. Yeah, they're fired up. Look. Sam Adams, Eric England, they're a couple hot dogs, Dave. They like to, to get things exciting in there. They like to talk a little trash to the offensive linemen, even when they make just a routine play like this one is. They get fired up. Yeah, they got that wake-up call at halftime, trailing 10-3, and boy, did the Aggies wake up. Phil Johnson would like to put him back to sleep here on third and one. It's a long one. They need, need to get up to the 24-yard line. Can bootleg. Johnson will have it with that speed and goes out of bounds at the 31. This is where the athleticism of a Phil Johnson comes in. Something Jeff Handy does not possess is the speed that Johnson has. He can just outrun people to the corner, and he does so on this play. Sometimes as an offense, can you call certain plays when a defense is this juiced up and going for you so much? I think that you can get people uh, upfield too much. You can get them too excited. A trick play might do something because the Aggie defense is going to be firing and flying around to the ball. First and 10 now for Missouri at the 31. The pitch back to Lions. Finds a hole and creases his way to the 35. 
pick up of four on first down. Jason Atkinson brought him down there. Atkinson trying to follow in the footsteps of a guy named Quentin Coriat. He wasn't a bad player, was he? Linebacker you, isn't it, mm, at uh, Texas A&M these That's days? But uh, Quentin Coriat, the number two pick in the NFL draft for the Colts. Seven returning starters on this Aggie defense, but they lost Kevin Smith and Chris Coombs, Coombs, and uh, also Quentin Coriat. Cahill, he's near midfield to the 49-yard line. And now Missouri seems to have caught their breath. An important series. Missouri to hang on to the ball like they're doing. It looks like Marcus Buckley was in a little man to man coverage. Cahill just beats him out of the uh, backfield on a bootleg, gets first down yardage. Nice play by Cahill. One thing, too, Missouri has done by moving it this far. If they go no further, they have won a field position battle. First and 10 now for the Tigers at their own 49. And the give again to Cahill. Not much doing uh, into the middle, but I'll tell you that offensive line for Missouri is moving that defensive pile, and they're moving it back a couple of yards. They That's did it very well in the first half, and they're trying to do it again here, but they're running a lot of just straight ahead plays. A lot of those plays that were gaining five, six, seven yards, especially in the fourth, uh, the first quarter, are uh, are only getting a netting two or three this time around. And that one officially two yards, and it's second and eight. From the 49 of AM. Quick hitter to Holly. Holly did a good job just to avoid a loss and picks up maybe one. Steve Solari made a good defensive play for the Aggies. The Aggies seem to have this one red. It's one of those little turn ins, try to get blockers out in front of that wide receiver at Texas AM. I think they've seen that play a few too often. From Missouri, they had that one red. Well, now third down again. This time third and seven. Cahill and Freeman in the backfield. So is Johnson now from the shotgun. AM showing blitz. Here they come. Johnson avoids the rush. Was he out of bounds? And it is intercepted. Now, wait a minute. I think Johnson was out of bounds. I don't think this is going to count. I think Johnson was marking, out of bounds. Excuse me, Dave. They are marking him out right at the 40-yard line. I think he stepped in through at the same time, and that final step was over the uh, sideline. So a break for Missouri. But another interception by the Aggies. This one will be called back, though. He's forced out of the pocket by Atkinson and Buckley on the blitz. He's got nowhere to throw it. He's just got to throw that ball away. Well, I'm not sure of... he was out of bounds. I think you're right. It looked like he got rid of the, that ball. The replay looks like he was in. Whether he was in or he's out, Johnson's just got to throw that ball away. you got to say, we're going to punt the ball and see what we can do field position-wise, not try to force it. That's what gets Johnson in trouble. And uh, had that been ruled correctly, he probably would have been uh, it would have been intercepted. Now Pooler will punt again for Missouri. Came on in replace of Villarreal in the first half and did a great job. This one a little bit wobbly though. Let's see what kind of bounce it takes. Oh, a good one. Inside the 20 down to the 16 yard line. That's where AM will restart their offense. The Tigers might have gotten a break as. Johnson was ruled out of bounds and that negated a would be interception by A&M and we're still tied at 10 with 956 to go in the third quarter. Welcome back to Columbia. A&M has scored 10 unanswered points to tie things with Missouri. And but I'll tell you Jim when this score is posted around the country at different college stadiums. It is uh, going to bring a lot of oohs and ahs. So let's take a look at this again from Johnson was he in or out. Hard to tell the first time we look. Let's look at that right foot. He is in. It's ball away. Yeah, he's certainly in. Yep. They ruled him out though, and that took away an interception by AM. Brian Nooner, what's the feeling down on the sidelines? I'll tell you what, even though uh, the Texas AM players are trailing 10 to nothing, you could sense a quiet confidence. Uh, they knew that they, could, they were going to get back in this game. Now, since they've come out in the second half, there was a lot more enthusiasm. And although they're not showing it right now, that confidence is carrying from the bench onto the field, and they're expressing it out on the field, and, and uh, it's showing. 
Greg Hill. Good running by Hill. As he'll be ruled down at the 23 yard line. A pickup of seven on first down. Hill right. struggled. In Had only 30 yards rushing on eight carries, and one of those was for 21. Here comes Hill. He's got several blocks. The Missouri players on the ground. See how the AM players, uh, the block are getting Missouri on the ground, something they weren't able to do in the first half, but they are this half. Illegal motion, offense, repeat first down. We'll take that run away by Hill. Penalties hurting the Aggies. You take that one play away from Granger to Harrison, Harrison going 73 yards, and this Tiger defense has stuffed the Aggies. Help this time by the by the penalty. You know, you made a good point about uh, shocking the college football world when this score is posted around. And I think at halftime, that's probably what the, the Missouri coaches were saying. We can shock the world, but you've got to believe in yourself and believe you can do it. And it's only half over. Granger rolling out. Granger's going to be ripped down. Steve Martin, the freshman, a wild and crazy guy for the Tigers, and. <laughs> Right now, the Aggies are not laughing. Steve Martin stars in L.A. stories and <laughs> makes sacks, too. Steve Martin, the freshman. And again, I think this is a coverage sack. Look, Ranger's got nowhere to go. He's got time, but he's got nowhere to go. And that gives Steve Martin enough time to get off his block, and make a nice play. Brian Nooner, what's going on down there? I'll tell you what, uh, Texas A&M's offensive coordinator came over to Jeff Granger before this series, and he said, Jeff, you got to get rid of the ball sooner. You just have to. Even though he got rid of it on the touchdown pass, he wants him to release it and find his receiver sooner. Second and 20 from his own end zone. Gets rid of it. Incomplete. Boy, oh boy, was Cliff Gross nailed by Ringenberg. Ringenberg, the senior with lots of experience, he knew this play. He was in Gross's hip pocket. And there's Granger. He wants to go to him all the way. He's looking downfield as a diversion. Mm. Boy, I can that feel that nowhere. one. <laughs> now that's fun for a linebacker, right? When you're one on one and that uh, back is looking back toward the quarterback, you know he doesn't know I'm coming. <laughs> I got a free shot here. They're the, they're the fun ones. Then you now, start licking your chops. Oh, yeah. You? When he's in the open field with the ball and you have no help, then, then he's got the advantage. And the last time on third down, Granger threw a 73-yard touchdown pass. He needs 20 yards here to keep this drive alive. Almost picked off. Kevin McIntosh thought he should have had it. That was nowhere near Wilbert Biggins, the intended receiver. And it's three and out for Texas A&M. There's a tremendous timing problem between Texas A&M's quarterback, Granger, and the receivers. They seem to be running patterns and hardly ever looking back for the ball. It looks like they're all thinking that they're decoys, that they're not going to receive the ball. Granger doesn't even have anybody to look to. And Davis again back in his own end zone. He's been busy today. This is sixth punt. He's done a great job, though, of punting. The wind has really not been a factor either way. Holly backs up to his own 43. Slips down. There's another tackle for Faroe Field. And he slips down at the 46 yard line. But again, that field position that we talked about, the field position battle now being won by Mizzou. It's pretty nice when you start your drive at your own uh, 46 yard line. Short way to go to have to score. Well, with 8.30 to go here in the third quarter, we're tied at 10, and we will be back in just a moment. A&M and Missouri are tied at 10. Jim Ryan, I think that uh, certainly Missouri has withstood that 73-yard touchdown pass. They seem to have caught their wind again and ready to go. They've regrouped. I think that they're proving to themselves that the first half was not a fluke. They would go out and they stop Texas A&M again in this latest drive, and they do it convincingly. And that's got to help their confidence, and confidence is so important for a team that's been struggling defensively. And Handy is back in at quarterback for Missouri. Bill Johnson got away with an interception on the last drive, and so now Handy is in for Mizzou. to Solly. Room to run. Solly forced out of bounds. Close to a first down. Inside AMM territory. And now another flag. I 
be a personal foul it's, tacked on. It's got to be. He was well out of bounds, but hey, that player might have held up. I don't know that he did anything intentional. Let's take a look. It looked like Solly was just being held up by the Texas A&M defender. Here As he we comes look at on the, the reverse. Reverse Solly. Uh, anytime you can outrun Marcus Buckley, he gets a little block there from Handy and gets around Buckley. Nice play. Well, Atkinson, well, he shoved him first and then held him up. Yeah. That's a tough that's, call. That, that's, that's a tough one. I, I, See, there's the shove, and then, whoop, oh, I didn't well, mean to I do that. Got I, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> he was so far out of bounds, and he had stepped out uh, a, a second or two earlier, so I guess that's why they're calling it. It wasn't by the ferociousness of the hit by any means. Yeah, it's like pulling the trigger and then quick trying to catch the bullet. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Oh, a big break again for Mizzou. Now it's down to the 32-yard line. And whistle blew, played dead before it gets started. 8.21 to go here in the third quarter. 10-10 our score. Missouri making a statement. It looked like a... We weren't ready to go, so let's see. You count the downs now. It's, it's still first down, right? Okay. It looks that way. All right. I was <laughs> going to say Missouri makes make... clear. <laughs> we don't want to get that wrong again. Missouri making a statement by their play in the second half to try to tell Texas A&M, this is not a fluke. This is not where we're going to just play with you for a while and then go fold. Mm -hmm. We're here for the duration. Holly again. Not much doing. Holly is sandwiched after. I would say maybe a half yard pickup by Hendricks. The last time they had run that play, I said Texas A&M had seen it several times already and had it smelled out, so to speak, and Missouri insists on running it again. But Texas A&M, with the speed that they have on defense, they're sooner or later going to catch up with this Mizzou offense and start to making some big plays. Second and ten. We'll just call it no game. Draw play to Cahill. I think the left guard from Missouri moved. And again, they whistled it dead before it got going. It's going to be procedure. That'll back him up five. Dead ball. False start. Offense. Five yards. Repeat second down. Okay. I want to, uh, Jim, uh, Missouri's rotating so many players. I want to ask you, the, uh, the positives are obvious. It keeps the players fresh, but is the continuity, is it disrupted in any sense? Once again, they've just brought in a new guard, Tim Alvarado. I think you make an excellent point, Brian. That's something that we were going to talk about, uh, about their continuity. You just don't get into the flow of the game, and although it does keep players fresh, I see it as a negative. But Missouri has made it a positive. Pass completed. Freeman's got it. And close to the original line of scrimmage at the 31 yard line. Yeah, they're trying to play a lot of players at Missouri, Jim, because they're worried about the depth later on in the year. They felt like it hurt them last year. They had so many injuries last year. You see Handy rolling to his left, but throwing that way. Tough throw. Freeman is open enough that he can take the time to turn around, get the ball. Steve Soleri comes up, makes the play. Not bad on a uh, to pick up five yards there and make it third and 10 rather than third and 15. Need to get to the 21. Handy audibleizing at the line. Wants to go deep, and there's flags everywhere. Holding on was Frazier. Victor Bailey, the intended receiver. Good audible by Certainly Jeff was. Handy. Jeff saw the man to man coverage, saw Derek Frazier and Victor Bailey's face. One of the matchups that uh, is key in this game because Derek Frazier plus, plays such good man-to-man -man defense. They wanted to go up top. Same play they used against Illinois to score a touchdown. And Frazier said, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to grab you. Frazier might have saved a touchdown with this. Just a quick hitting little uh, over the shoulder. Handy trying to lay it in there. Frazier pulling on the shirt saying, hey, you got by me and I'm not going to let you score six on me. I'll that's, take the penalty. That's an automatic first down. And now the ball inside the 20 down to the 18 yard line. Great play by Handy heads up. They said this is one of the things that Handy gives them is the ability to come up and change the play at the line. 
Bob Andy, Stilson. a guy that ran the run and shoot in high school. And he's different. He's used to a lot of wild and crazy sure. things out there. Draw play to Cahill. Still on his feet, gets down to the 16, and that's where he'll stop. 6.40 to go. Cahill coming off a knee injury, tore a ligament here against Nebraska. Cahill looking sharp this year. Brian? Interesting thing about Ron L. Cahill, when he came to Missouri, he weighed 165 pounds and he was playing tailback. Since that time, he's bulked up to 210. As you see, he finds himself playing fullback. He was the incumbent tailback mm -hmm. last year before his knee injury. Bob Stull utilizing his players, get the best players on the field. We'll move Cahill to pullback. Second and eight. Freeman breaks loose. Freeman inside the 10. First down at the eight yard line. And I can't say enough about the play of the offensive line. Once again, Mike Badowski, I mean, we ought to nominate this guy for player of the game. But you see, he gets a block, and Freeman does a tremendous job of reading that block, and instead of cutting inside, he allows his offensive lineman to take that defender the way he wants to go, and he cuts off of that block. First and goal from the eight for Mizzou. 79, Mike Podoski. The give to Freeman. Good play defensively by Larry Jackson. Stopped him dead in his tracks. Clock rolling, five and a half to go in the third quarter. Tied at 10 are Mizzou and Texas A&M. Barry Jackson, inside linebacker. He's just shooting up the gap, and somebody misses a block. He's untouched, and there's nothing a back can do about that. I'll just scramble, see what I can get. No, second and goal now. Backs him up to around the eight and a half yard line. Lone setback is Cahill. And now handy from the shotgun. Wants to throw, gets it to Bailey, and then he gets nowhere. Boy, that we talk about throwing it into traffic. <laughs> Man. The traffic was created by their own offensive line. It's that same little wide receiver screen pass where this wide receiver just takes a few steps inside, tries to get behind his offensive lineman. See all this? See the left side of the, the offensive line? They'll pull out. They'll be in your screen in just a second. See, they're all in the way there. They're all trying to get downfield to make blocks. Bailey did a good job coming up with that ball, but nowhere to go. Now the 10th play of this drive. Third and goal from the 10. Andy rolling out. Andy's going to run for it now, and he goes out of bounds at the four-yard line. And the crowd all saying, go, go, go. <laughs> Finally, Handy did. I kept, he kept, I think, expecting Texas A&M to come up and play him to run and hope that would leave a receiver open. I think you make a good point, Dave. The uh, Texas A&M Aggies did a good job at staying home. If you jump up and start going after the quarterback, creates a hole in the zones back there, and he'll be able to find somebody, possibly for a touchdown. You have to wait till that quarterback crosses the line of scrimmage, then you go get him. So it sets up. A relatively short field goal attempt for Jeff Jackie. A 21-yard attempt. He had a 21-yarder earlier today. It is good. And Missouri leads again. The Tigers with a 21-yard field goal from Jeff Jackie have the lead again after Texas A&M had scored 10 unanswered points. The Tigers now lead 13-10 with 4.07 to go in the third quarter. 1,000 on hand here, and as Dan Devine said at halftime, not a huge crowd, but certainly an enthusiastic one. They are watching the Tigers lead the fifth-ranked Aggies 13-10 here late in the third quarter. Booms it towards the corner. Mickens has it. And a bust loose. Mickens will be stopped right at the 20. Good coverage by special teams of the Tigers. You see the uh, scoring. Jackie with a 21-yard field goal. 
Took over four minutes, 10 plays. They go 50 yards on that drive, and Missouri leads again. Boy, it's so important Assuming mentally that. to get up on oh, top, yeah. right? Consuming that clock, too, and 10 plays against this Missouri. They've had a lot of long drives that have resulted in scores. And uh, if you're going to beat Texas A&M, keep the ball out of their offense's hands. And outside of that 73-yard touchdown pass, Granger has struggled. This one, a fake and go, and defensed extremely well by Jason Oliver. <laughs> Oliver, the guy that missed the tackle, Ryan Matthews tried to fake him out, and Oliver was with him every step of the way. Good coverage by Oliver. Granger tried to pump fake to pull the defense in. Missouri was having nothing to do with it. Missouri seems like they've uh, they've read Texas A&M's playbook. I should say. Look at the numbers by Granger. 142 yards now. You take that 73 yarder away and that's six of 19 the rest of the way and that's not much for Granger. Red shirt sophomore quarterback. And Granger again this time given time a quick hitter across the middle for Harrison another one hopper. Granger cannot find his range. We've seen this all day long and it's been a problem for Granger uh, throughout the year so far and the thing about Texas A&M as we look at the replay Granger has an open receiver over the middle and he just throws it into the turf once again. He's overthrowing with the ball. I don't know if he's got a problem with his motion. Maybe he's got an arm problem. The problem that Texas A&M has as far as going to a backup. The guy behind Granger is Corey Pullock. He's a true freshman. He was very rattled when he got in against Stanford. I don't think they want to put him into the fray. Two of nine on third down today. It's reminiscent of the Stanford game, incomplete. Andre White was right there defensively on Wilbert Biggins. And it's three and out again for the Aggies. Wow. Complain all night or all day about Granger not throwing the ball on target. He finally gets one on target, and the converted defensive back, Biggins, doesn't hold on. I guess it would have been a pretty tough catch, but he's got to get both hands out there and get him on the ball. And now Victor Bailey goes back deep on punt coverage for Missouri. Bailey waits for it. Back at his own 35, will let it bounce. And it definitely takes an AM bounce. Bailey picks it up at the 30. Has some room to run. Bailey breaks outside. We have penalty flags down as Bailey gets up to the 44-yard line. That looked like it might have been a mistake for Bailey to pick that ball up. He bobbled the ball and kind of had to catch his feet, get him underneath him. But he got some positive yardage. I don't know if he'll be called back for this penalty. It's probably against the receiving team. Usually is. Very rarely is it against the coverage team. And they'll do it from the spot. Clipping. So the Tigers will start in the hole. But the good news for Missouri is they have forced this guy into all kinds of problems. And Granger has created some for his own as well. Certainly has. He can't be very happy with himself. I wonder if uh, if AM, RC Slocum will go to another player, whether it be Corey Pullock. They also have the red shirt freshman on the bench, Matt Miller. He had won the job in the spring because Granger wasn't there, and Matt Miller had actually won the job. And uh, then Granger decided to come back. They gave him the job and said, we'll make Corey Pullock the true freshman who has a tremendous talent. He's the quarterback of the future for a and We'll make him the backup. And in case uh, A&M fans who are watching this on pay-per-view are wondering about Tommy Preston, another uh, outstanding quarterback, he did not make the trip. And there's a look at Matt Miller. With the baseball cap on. Doesn't look like he's ready to go in, does it? No. Right now. <laughs> Trying to rally. Maybe he's got the rally cap on. Freeman dances around and gets a half yard. That's it. To the 20 yard line. Handy still in there at quarterback for Missouri. I think Bob Stoll and his staff have to guard against becoming too conservative. All day long, they've had brilliant play calling. Have really crossed up a and and with a three-point lead. There's still plenty of time uh, in to go in this ball game. They will need to score more points to win. Andy avoids Buckley. Intercepted. Picked off by number 29, Patrick Bates, and Bates has it at the 15-yard line for Texas A&M. The one thing Missouri wanted to avoid more than anything else was the interception. 
and Patrick Bates comes up with a huge play for the Aggies. Patrick Bates, one of the uh, real stalwarts, a hard hitter on this uh, A&M defense. Handy does a good job of getting away from Buckley. It's a zone defense, and they're just trying to find the tight end in the zone, but Patrick Bates from his free pay, uh, safety position read it perfectly. He's just sitting back there reading the quarterback. He sees where the tight end is trying to get in the seam of the zone there and just picks it off. Nice play. Well, Gene Snisky is down right now for the Tigers, a guy that has a sore left shoulder anyway and looked like he just had a slight cramp there as he walks off under his own power. And certainly not going to carry him off at 6'7", 300 pounds. <laughs> Take a few guys to do that. A had big play for out. Patrick Bates. Transfer from UCLA, Bates, uh, preseason All-American. And uh, he's a guy he's, that might go out early. A yeah. junior, uh, he certainly has the ability to play in the professional league. You're, you're, you're exactly right. At 6'4", 225, some people have compared him with Steve Atwater of mm -hmm. the Denver Broncos. And if you know about Steve Atwater, his defensive coordinator has, has told a lot of people that Atwater is the best defensive player in the league. So that's a good company for Bates to be in. Now here comes Hill, tripped up again. Matt Murray will be credited for the tackle, but Hill going nowhere today, running uphill, isn't he? He either slipped on, a, uh, on the turf or he might have run into his own man, who one of the guards. Oh, look at that. Murray just pushing the guard back and creating the tackle by his strength and, and getting the A&M lineman on his heels and into the backfield. That's a that's a way to make a tackle, too. You don't always have to get your hands on the run. Jim Hill, who ran last week for 125 yards, 29 yards today on nine carries. And one of those was a 21-yarder. So on the other eight, he has run for eight yards. Granger almost All picked right. off. Now a flag comes in. It might be interference by Oliver. I think it is. I think Oliver hit the receiver just a little bit too early. He made the play and made the deflection, but not before he made contact first. Can't do it. If he's going for the ball, okay, but he, he was trying to play through the receiver, and they're going to call that every time. Yeah, he definitely got there early. Well, that's one if he would have seen the ball coming. If he he could, got, yeah, if, 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 right? right? I mean, that's always easy to say from up here. But if you see that ball coming, you could pick that off, and he's gone. If his timing had been right, he had to get that right shoulder and right arm from around behind the receiver to in front of him. He could have picked it off. Yeah, the guy who wants to be a director, Jason Oliver, he missed his cue on that one. Now, first and goal from the nine-yard line. Hill slips again a little bit. And he bulls his way forward to the six-yard line. Tigers right now would just dearly love to hold the Aggies to a field goal. Well, after the last interception, they were able to hold the Aggies to a field goal in the second quarter, and that uh, really helped their momentum, helped them mentally, I think. If they could do the same thing here, it would be a big boost. And conversely for Texas A&M, if they can get a touchdown here, they'd have the lead for the first time. Second and goal from the six. Granger, open. wide open to Hill, touchdown! Hill for the second consecutive week scores a touchdown through the air. His first two touchdowns through the air of his career. And Texas A&M leads for the first time today. Greg Hill, also a tremendous receiver out of the backfield, as we've talked about before. He had only eight catches last year, but uh, before today, he had five catches already this year. They want to use him more as a receiver. And there he comes up with the touchdown. I think they had some man coverage going there. Hill just outran it. Benetulius now for the point after. And A&M, at one time trailed 10 nothing. Now leads 17 13 here with 122 to go in the ball game or in the third quarter excuse me 122 to go in the third quarter Texas A&M getting the touchdown from Granger to Hill as Granger rolls out again they make him have the tough throw rolling to your right throwing to your right and see Regensburg's just a little too slow getting there Greg Hill wide open and makes the six points that's a tough throw and we Talked all day about Granger being off target. On this one, he guns it. He's on target, and he had to as Hill is running away from him. 
<laughs> and for Granger, it's like, oh, finally. Wow. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, his second touchdown pass of the second half. And Hill, who has been stopped on the ground, goes through the air for the touchdown. And the Aggies of A&M now breathe a little bit easier, leading Missouri 17-13 here in the third quarter. Going into the season, Dave, the uh, Texas A&M Aggies knew that they had a tremendous team, except maybe at the quarterback Bobby position. R.C. Slocum says he doesn't have to win games for us, just don't get us beat. Yeah, Granger now is like, hey, we got it made now. Here we go, here we go. And now we'll see what Missouri is made of, trailing for the first time. And this one will be downed in the end zone. And the Tigers will start on their own 20. The Aggies, after that interception, go 16 yards in four plays. Hill with the six-yard touchdown reception to take a 17-13 lead over AM. Let's go down to Brian Nooner. You know, I thought it was interesting during the week, defensive coordinator Don Lindsay of Missouri, I asked him to describe Texas A&M's defense. He said, well, they're like a pack of piranha. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see if they feed off their offensive success after that uh, last drive. First and 10, Missouri at the 20-yard line. And Missouri moves the pile forward about four yards. Well, they just kept shoving and shoving and shoving, and finally Jackson gets up. I wonder if he got the uh, number five for Jackson five. <laughs> just curious. I don't know that. <laughs> he, uh, he is the fastest uh, running back of the three tailbacks, the tailback by committee. Missouri may be getting a little predictable here. Yeah. Last four or five series, they've run the ball on first down. The defense allowing at 13 points a game. That's right where Missouri is right now. Dave. According to that, oh! Cahill. Cahill. Cahill stays on his feet outside. Cahill for a first down to the 34-yard line. Cahill running well today. Ron L. Cahill is doing a super job offensively for the Tigers now with 40 yards on 13 carries. Just a draw play. Once again, Podowski out in front. The fullback gives a good block. Springs Cahill. Well, I've said it about three or four times, but I think Podowski's just playing an outstanding game. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's a hoss, no question about it. The guy who dropped about 25 pounds and said this made him quicker. Jackson again. This time Jackson is stuffed. Looked like he was going to get loose. And now a little taunting going on. And the flags come late. Might be a personal foul again against the Aggies. I think it is. They knocked uh, Tim Alvarado down. Personal foul. Aggies. Sam Adams, I think, is the culprit. I think a lot of that is just the frustration Texas A&M has felt today. This isn't going the way they plan, even though they're in the lead. Personal foul, defense, automatic first down. It was sad at Sam Adams, but just threw Alvarado to the ground well after the whistle had blown. I think you're right. You get frustrated, but you've got to have a little bit more maturity about you mm. and realize that you have to channel your energies into stopping uh, Missouri's offense before the whistle blows and not afterwards. So first and 10 now for Missouri, all the way up to their own 48-yard line, trailing by four. Down for the blitz. Picked up well. Cahill, though, is stuffed by Eric England. Loss of a couple. Trying to trapping play again, Eric England, who uh, replaces Mark Wheeler. And that will do it for the third quarter. Texas A&M coming up with a couple of touchdowns in that third quarter. The 73-yard touchdown pass from Granger to Harrison and the six-yard touchdown toss from Granger to Hill. And Texas A&M leads the Missouri Tigers after three quarters of play, 17-13. Surprising is that Missouri's run the ball 44 times. Look at the the difference in just the number of plays that Missouri has run as opposed to AM. It's uh, staggering. And that 173 yard touchdown pass to Harrison really broke the back of Missouri. And the interceptions have hurt the Tigers as well. Handy in a quarterback on second and 12 from the shotgun. 
Here comes the pressure, and they called the perfect play for it. Cahill gets it down to the 40-yard line. If ever you're going to call a screen, you'll want to call it when the other team is blitzing. They're coming with a lot of folks, and then they're playing a zone behind it. And it's just easy. There's just a big gap in between as the uh, linemen get upfield and the defensive backs get back in the uh, backfield. And there's just a big gap there, and uh, Missouri took advantage of it. Well, it's the Fisher-Spasky uh, chess match, and uh, Missouri has won that battle more often today. You see the total yards. The Tigers have dominated this game. Then on the scoreboard, the Aggies lead 17-14. Handy. Oh. Ooh. Got completed to Holly and almost picked off. Holly gets it down to the 23 yard line. I'm still catching my breath because Derek <laughs> Frazier looked like he was going the other way. It looked like six going the other way. You're exactly right. And the reason is Jeff Handy holds on to this ball too long. He waited to, for Kenny Holly to get open. Look at Frazier, just out of his reach. Kenny Holly had been wide open just a few seconds earlier, and if Handy had delivered the ball, it would not have been nearly as close of, uh, uh, that Frazier might have the interception. And imagine me losing my breath. Imagine what Handy was feeling at the time. And now it's first and 10. Mizzou now down to the 23-yard line. Cahill busting outside. And inside the 20 down to the 19 yard line pick up of about five on first down before Lance Tackleman could stop him. The Tigers are moving the ball on offense. You're exactly right. And what I'm surprised about is guys like Jason Atkinson and Marcus Buckley and Derek Frazier have not been able to come up with the big plays that they're known for like especially Buckley. He's been pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. Sure has. I can't think of too many times where we have uh, called number nine today. A couple of plays, but uh, Buckley normally much more pesky. Second down, six yards to go. The give is to Jackson. Again, look at that pile move forward. And he gets it down to around the 17 yard line. Again, Tackleman making the stop. Again, you have to credit the Missouri offensive line getting the push. It's only a few yards, but it just puts Missouri in a, in a chance to make a third down conversion. If you're just at third and three, third and four, that's a lot easier to make than third and nine. That's a third and a long four. We'll call it third and five. Clock under 13 minutes to go. Missouri driving again. It's the ninth play of the drive now. And again, they were coming with the blitz. Pass intended for Freeman a little bit out of his reach. Well, Handy did the right thing there, though. Make sure you avoid any kind of a turnover. We've got ourselves in field goal range. Stull's not happy to go away with only three, but that pulls you to within one in this game. Gives you a chance to yeah. come back with a field goal later. One of the few times that Missouri did not <laughs> execute. That's a that's a big ball. <laughs> Someone hovering over the field. In the hot air balloon. Jackie comes on. They'll spot it in the 25. A 35 yard attempt for Jackie, who already has a pair of 21 yard field goals today. It is no good. No good. Jackie pulled it off to the left. Well, they're on the left side of the field. I don't know what else to say that Jackie just pulled the ball. It looked like he just overstrode, I guess. We're going to see the replay. He wasn't all the way over on the left hash, pretty much in the middle of the field or now just to the left it. side. You he just pulls it. You can see it left. It is left. And Jackie does not get the easy three for Missouri. He misses from 35, and our score remains AM 17, Mizzou 13. At Columbia, right now, the Aggie fans on hand are happy because their Texas AM squad leads by four over Missouri, and they just avoided a three point field goal from the Tigers. That would have pulled Missouri to within one. This is going to be a tough series for Missouri. They have to be saying to themselves, what else do we have to do to win a ball game? You know, the, the scores by Texas A&M, at least two of them have come as a result of their offense turning the ball over. Missouri's offense turning the ball over. The defense has just been outstanding for Missouri. Rangers helped them a little bit. Eight of 23 through the air. 
Gibbs to Hill, dancing his way up close to the 30-yard line. And now you would figure this is where Hill will become a big factor as the Aggies will try to control the clock. Now we had talked earlier about uh, Jeff Granger trying to get into the flow of some uh, new pro-style offense and that, but uh, he's been out of the flow, and this is what they have to do. Put the ball in this man's hands. Greg Hill, just an outstanding runner that gets yards even after he's hit and has the speed to break away. They've got to chew up clock. They've been able to stop Hill, the Tigers have so far today, but they're going to win this game. They've got to stop him here. A first down and more for Gross. Gross gets it up across the 35 to the 36-yard line. And the clock will stop briefly while they move the chains with 11.58 to go in the ball game. And when you look at uh, Texas A&M's offense, Dave, the skill positions, they don't like anybody over six foot. I don't know what's up with that. Hmm. You look at the receivers, they're like the Smurfs. Right. Their running backs are all 5'11", 5'10". Even Cliff Gross, 5'11", 240. The speed is the one common denominator for that. Here comes Hill again. Hill now starting to show. It took him a while to get used to the Omni turf, all the way up to midfield before Maurice Benson could haul him down. Missouri shuttling in some fresh troops as you watch Greg Hill. Let's just get the ball to him. Get some people out in front. Let Greg Hill do his thing like break tackles. He went, ran right through the arms of Jerome Madison, but it's hard to fault Madison. Greg Hill, an outstanding back. Now 56 yards on the ground for Hill. 23 of those in the last two carries. Hill again. This time stopped after a gain of about three or four. To the 46-yard line goes Hill, and Earl Brooks stopped him there. Still 11-10 to go in the quarter, Dave, but I think Missouri's got to be thinking maybe turnover. We need something to turn this around right now. Momentum just kind of ebbing and flowing. It's not really in the favor of anybody right now. Missouri's got to put it in their favor. Hill again. Bust through the pile. Another first down before Brooks could haul him down at the 37-yard line. And it's become the Greg Hill show here. Just as we expected that they would do with a four-point lead in the fourth quarter. Give it to Greg Hill. And AM's blocking is just very simple. We'll get some hats out in front of him. I'm just talking about blockers and try to get it, a, a, a helmet on a helmet as far as the Missouri defense is concerned. And then you see the acceleration of Greg Hill. When he sees just a little bit of an opening, boy, he can hit that hole and be through it before that defense knows it. Look at that. Missouri has just dominated there, dominated in total yards, dominated in rushing yards. But they trail on that scoreboard. And Gross picks up just a few, gets about three or four more. And you would think Missouri right now has got to believe that the Aggies are going to run it. Uh, and Don Lindsay is saying we've got to stop these guys knowing what they're going to do and, and just going out and stopping it is two different things. You know, I think that uh, mentally Missouri might be, as I said, at the start of the drive, it might be deflated a little bit because they're saying to themselves, what else do we have to do? We think we've done our part. But we're not ahead. He'll gets free again. Hill looking for the end zone inside the 10 all the way down to the six yard line. Wow. Hill has gone into another gear on this drive. We're going to isolate here on Greg Hill as we watch sooner or later the speed of a Greg Hill is going to make a difference because Missouri just doesn't have it. They've got players in position to make the play. A good block right there on Williams, but he just outruns the, the uh, defensive secondary until they can finally stop him at the six yard line and that speed makes a difference and <laughs> look what he has done just the last few carries he has now gone up to 96 yards yeah in the last six carries 62 yards in motion goes short pitch back that one's to Thomas as Hill gets a breather and Thomas trying to cut it back in gets down to the three yard line Missouri really you get the feeling cannot allow a touchdown here a field goal they stay alive in their hopes to win this thing but it would be tough for the Tigers I think and Bob Stoll to score twice on that Aggie defense. 
I think you make a good point. They've done so well moving the ball up and down the field. Like we said, they've dominated on first downs. They've dominated running the ball up until this drive, yet with only 13 points, they had to know that that's not going to be enough. This is one of those situations where the score is really deceptive. Second down and goal from the two. up again is Hill this time a gain of about a half a yard and that's it third and goal Jermaine Wilkins makes a nice stop there Wilkins one of those bandit players Don uh, Lindsay goes with a bandit and a rover in replace of an outside linebacker and a strong safety although they do very similar things and he does that because they had so many tweeners they had guys that were too small to play outside linebacker a little too slow to play in the defensive secondary here comes a big play third and goal from the one hill he's in touchdown Greg Hill, who stumbled his way into the end zone, scores again for the Aggies. Hill with his second rushing touchdown of the year, and he deserved that one because Hill did a lion's share of the work on that drive. Now the folks at College Station can breathe a little bit easier. Venetulius with the point after. It's no good. It's no good. Well, touchdown and a yeah. field goal now ties things up. Instead of having to need two touchdowns, a touchdown and a field goal would tie it up. You're right. That does make a difference. If we look at the touchdown. Hill wants to just go off tackle. Here as he's stumbling. He always going forward though. And although there's players there to make the play, Hill's falling forward. And we talked about that at the, in the open, how he gets yards after he's hit. Boy, nice job by Missouri's defense to make him belly out and run wide. Just not enough on the at the point of attack. And Hill with the touchdown. Not happier now as he's run for 97 yards and AM leads by 10. Now Texas A&M who had trailed 10 nothing in this game. R.C. Slocum. He's still right now as they have a 10 point lead 23 13. Missouri led 10 3 at the half but it's been pretty much Texas A&M here in the second half and they've used big plays to get ahead. Interception the 73 yard touchdown play to Harrison and now Missouri back on their heels trailing by 10. Benetulius to kick off. And this one comes to Madison. And he'll be stopped shy of the 20 at the 18 yard line. Brian, what's the crowd reaction down there on the field right now? Well, Dave, I'll tell you what, it's very interesting. You know, Texas A&M has the tradition that their fans stand throughout the whole game, but on contrast, Missouri fans have been sitting the whole game. And, you know, just a, not too long ago, we were talking about a four-point ball game against the number five team in the nation at home, and there was not much crowd support at all. Now, I don't know how you explain that, but I'm sure Bob Stoll would have liked to have seen his crowd up making some noise a little bit sooner. First and ten now for Missouri. 7.42 to go. Let's see if the Tigers can give these fans something to cheer about. Handy does a nice job. Now he has plenty of time. Across the middle, pass caught and held on by Holly. I don't know how he held on to that because he really took a lick from Frazier. Ooh. He just found that open spot, knew his quarterback was in trouble, got open. And just a good job of Handy uh, finding him. Handy looks for uh, Victor Bailey on the right side. Bailey, uh oh, he's covered. Now what do I do? I'm getting pressure. I'll go the other way. Just find somebody. And he finds Holly. And Frazier found Holly too. Found his ribs, it looked like. Mm. First and 10 now from the 31. Airborne, this one thrown up for grabs and to no one in particular. Bailey was the intended receiver. 
Bailey circled and uh, was about 10 yards shy of the toss. <laughs> Handy had a little more on that than he thought. Well, he's going to the outside shoulder. He thought the receiver was going to continue down the sideline. He wants to throw that fade route and try to throw it over his outside shoulder so that only the receiver can catch it and the defensive back can't. But uh, for some reason, Victor Bailey cut inside on the play. One thing about these Tigers, they sure haven't avoided anybody with their pre uh, Big A conference schedule. Man, they, they're talking about tough. Uh, Illinois, it's Indiana. Uh, next week, Texas A&M today. Marshall, a great Division I AA team. Last year's runner up. And then they got to start the Big Eight play at Colorado. <laughs> Cahill with the reception. Solari with the stop. And Dave, when you're talking about trying to get a program back on track, it's very tough to do that when you're going to play non-conference opponents like that. There's a couple ways of getting a, a program back on track, try to get it winning. And one of the ways is a softer schedule. Missouri has not taken that route. No, they haven't. I said at Colorado, actually, the game will be played here. They'll bring lights in. It'll be a night game on a Thursday night. The return of Colorado to the scene of the fifth down ah, for the first time. Yeah, that's right. Big Sam Adams stuffed that one right back in the face of Jeff Handy. Almost pulled it down into his gut, didn't he? And then Missouri will be forced to punt. The coaches later this week will be going, hey, catch this. Yeah. Catch, catch yeah. it. Yeah. I'll say you got no hands. Oh, no, he just deflected it. But Sam Adams, just a tremendous player mm -hmm. uh, last year. He just burst onto the scene as a freshman. Yeah, a newcomer of the year in the That's Southwest right. Conference. Defensive newcomer of the year. Hill was the other guy. Cooler with another good punt. Oh, look where this one's going. Wow. All the way down to the four yard line. Well, my question where was Derek Frazier? He, he was watching it. He was. He wasn't even thinking about going near that punt, and he could have caught it at about the 15. What a great punt from Pooler. He hits that one 56 yards, and more importantly, it goes out at the four-yard line. Possibly R.C. Slocum, so we don't want to take any chance on any turnovers. Might don't be. even think about catching it. Yeah, but now he got a bad bounce, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Now you get a turnover down here, and it can be a change of scene a lot for Bob Stahl and the Tigers. 23-13, Texas A&M, 6-17 to go here in the fourth quarter, and we'll be back in just a moment. Missouri and Columbia, beautiful campus in the Big 8 Conference, and Texas A&M now leading Missouri after the Tigers were surprising A&M by 10 early on in this game, but now A&M seems to have things in control, leading by 10 late in the fourth quarter. But A&M starting up near their own end zone at back of the four-yard line. And the give is to Gross, who has stopped at the five. Good play defensively in there for the Tigers. They're really playing well defensively. And John Safely was the guy that really made the big hit. And now Granger trying to play safely. I'm going to make sure they don't turn it over. Safely a freshman coming off of back surgery. And they say that this kid could be a force. And once again, Don Lindsay and Bob Stull just playing a plethora of players. Nice alliteration. You like that, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. This time it's Thomas. Thomas carrying half the Missouri team up to the 20-yard line. I think Hill is done for the day. Well, you look at the Texas A&M schedule. We we're talking about how tough the Missouri schedule is. And A&M schedule, they're going to have an easy go of things, you would think, the rest of the way. As we watch again, Thomas as he runs up. But A&M, you would think that they have a real good shot at going undefeated into the Cotton Bowl. I, I think so. And I think that that was even uh, more of a consideration earlier. I don't think A&M has played up to its potential through its non-conference schedule. They, uh, certainly Stanford was a very difficult game, but they ended up winning. They only beat Tulsa by 10. That was expected to be bigger. They certainly expected to play better offensively and defensively here today against uh, Missouri. So I don't think that they're really where they want to be. But in the whole scheme of things, certainly the Southwest Conference is not as strong as it used to be. And Dave, I think that you might look at uh, Texas A&M uh, playing for uh, in the Cotton Bowl and maybe playing for the national championship. Now they could very possibly be doing that. And if they're going to.
to be playing for a national championship. My opinion, they need to get some kinks worked out offensively. I mean, obviously Hill is the player, but they haven't been able to do something offensively until now, right? Well, they worked him out in a hurry. Gross, the fullback, running out of gas at around the 45-yard line. And a flag comes in late. Might be a personal foul against Missouri. Jermaine Wilkins caught up with Cliff Gross, who was gasping for air as he crossed midfield. Aren't these guys in shape? Cliff Gross, 5'11", 240, <laughs> just a quick hitter here. And once he gets past, it looks like Brooks, Earl Brooks misses the tackle, and he's into the uh, secondary, and there's no one in the middle there. The whole middle of the field was wide open. And you're right, he runs out of gas and could be a face. <laughs> Dead ball, personal foul, defense, automatic first down. You need to look at Texas A&M's offense. And uh, Don Lindsay has looked at it all day and outside of some big plays a couple big runs by Hill the Harrison 73 yard touchdown that big run by yeah. gross the defense of Missouri but you, you look at those things and you say well if they didn't have this and if they didn't have that it might be this high risk defense that Missouri is playing allows A&M to come up with plays like that. I think it does when you gamble sometimes you get burned and uh, that's certainly going to be the case anytime you're trying to gamble like that you know. The last two drives that A&M has put together is going to skew the statistics and make it look like they had a decent day running the football, mm -hmm. when in reality it wasn't the case until the fourth quarter. There go. There and go. here comes there Thomas. Thomas busted inside the 20 down to the 19-yard line. Clock moving, under five minutes to go in this one. How about a bowl picture like this? Texas A&M goes through undefeated. I think that they have a better chance than either Miami, Florida State, Florida, all have to play each other. Uh, or at least one other uh, highly ranked team. Texas A&M does not have to do that. And with the bowl alliance the way it is, the national championship game could be the Cotton Bowl. Yeah, very well could be with uh, A&M's already lofty ranking at number five. I like the new bowl alliance, though. I think it gives the fans a better chance of perhaps a national championship type game. If they're not going to have a playoff. It's, I guess, the next best thing. Thomas goes up over the top and gets it down inside the 15 down to the 14. They'll move the chains. And we're getting word that Florida lost today to Tennessee. Big loss there, huh? Yeah. I like the bowl lines too, Dave, and I, I expect that in the next few minutes you can tell us all how that works. <laughs> right. <laughs> we don't have enough air time. <laughs> no way. <laughs> We'd have to stay on about four hours <laughs> overtime to explain all that. And they'll figure it all out though and they'll confuse us by the time it's over. First and ten from the 14 yard line. The ball is given to Hill and he'll pick up about three. That'll get him close to that 100 yard mark. I thought Hill was done for the day. I guess not. Well, now they're just lining him up. It looked like about six or seven yards deep in the backfield. Just giving him the ball. Just zone blocking here. Pick up what you can. That's the old the way that USC used to do it and unofficially according to our numbers he has 100 yards now today in the second straight game over 100. Maybe that's why they put him back in you know, for a guy that had I don't know, around 30 at half and really didn't look very good at the half until that one drive all of a sudden he just came on. I guess that's what makes the great players the ones that can shift gears like that. He didn't have the hundred before. I'm sure officially now that will do it. Maurice Benson. The stop by Maggie Bain, still on its feet. Tradition that started back in the 20s. And, uh, a basketball player was forced to play because of many injuries on the Texas A&M team, and they have the 12th man tradition. And these guys all stand throughout. They've got the yell leaders. They don't have cheerleaders. No, that's right. They have the yell leaders. And they do actually have the 12th man that plays on special teams. Right. Number 12. It used to be the whole special teams would be made up of fans, but not anymore. Hill stopped at around the 13, 14. They'll mark it at the 13. John Safely again makes the stop, and we're nearing the two-minute mark. Missouri. 
Brian, a little more. Have you heard the yells down there on the field from the yell leaders? Uh, yes, I've heard it from the yell leaders and the band. You know, they uh, flew 450 members of the band up here, and they've been making a lot of noise today as we watch the field goal coming up. Let me tell you that they actually had yell practice last night under the Gateway Arch in St. Louis. Yell practice. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> yell practice. <laughs> My kids don't need that. Venetulius. And it is good. We have a couple kids that could be on that Yale team. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now it's a 13-point lead for AM. You read about this one in the paper tomorrow. If you saw this telecast, you will know that the score is not indicative of this. Their own end. 20 with 146 to go. This crowd here in Columbia now starting to file out as Hill appears to be done for the day. Greg Hill, who changed into another uniform, it appears. This is uh, their mascot, Reveille, at Texas a &M. Oh, for the Yell leaders? Yeah. Oh, it's he's the bark leader. Ah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> woof, woof. Yeah, uh, the collie. And it looks like uh, the Aggies will go to 4 0. Oh. Isn't it amazing that at Texas AM, their fourth game already this year, and Kansas State starts play today. AM will get a week off next week. Batted down. Second straight pass that's been batted down. Stops the clock with 1.43 to go. Sam Adams once again on the play. Or maybe it was Eric England. But, you know, Dave, when you look at Missouri, and a lot of people say, well, they're much improved. They really hung in there and played well in the second half against Illinois last week. And now just a 13-point loss to Texas A&M in a game they easily could have won had they hung just a little tougher for a little bit longer. Uh, but sooner or later, moral victories just aren't going to cut it for this program. And uh, it's good to see more competitive. Buckley was in on handy, but he got the pass away to Cahill. And Cahill fumbles the football as he goes down at the 35, and AM saying they have it, and they do. Chris Colin picks it up. And another turnover for the Tigers. And you know now that R.C. Slocum, who got his coaching start with Bob Stoll, will not try to rub it in on his friend, and he will just down this football and get out of here with the. Very hard fought victory. Oh, he's he's going to feel lucky to do so to get out of here. You see Cahill fumble the football. It's a shame. Missouri has really fought hard, especially Cahill's made some big plays, and to have it end like that, it's a shame for that young man. Well, the teams have their timeouts, all of them remaining. But I wouldn't expect Stoll to perhaps stop the clock here, and it might be that AM just runs out the clock. I'm certainly going to keep it on the ground. And they keep it on the ground to Thomas. He stays inbounds and goes down right at the 35 yard line. And Maurice Benson wrapped him up there. And now you know, the Tigers are saying, let's not quit yet. Let's call timeout here. Stop it with 119 to go. Now, don't forget, next week we'll be back in Lincoln, whereas Colorado and Oklahoma have gone more through the air. See Ringenberg being helped off the field for Missouri. Can you experience. Out? There you see Marcus Buckley. Yeah, Buckley was finished for the day. Arthritis uh, hobbled to start the year. He says he's back to full health again and ready to go. That was a mysterious illness that now, he had. Sarcoidosis, they called it. The inflammation of the joints that was just very painful, but he played through it. I, that's why I said arthritis. I, I didn't want to say that sar sarcoid thing. That's, that's what no. I was told. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm glad you attempted that. And Buckley is done for the day. Really, this Aggie defense is, is their team. They are terrific. The best defense last year, returning seven starters this year. Of course, they lost some great players. But now they can smile at Texas A&M. As the clock does wind down, Missouri choosing not to stop it. And we are down to the final seconds. The Aggies will go to 4 0. Bob Stull and the Tigers will go to 0 and 2 and face Indiana next week. In the Hoosiers backyard. Smith on the last play carries it, and that should do it. They'll stop the clock briefly to move the chains, and then they will wind it down. And R.C. Slocum can go over and shake the hand of Bob Stull. 
And they stopped the clock just to move the chains. Now they go and here they go. Bob Stoll and R.C. Slocum still get together three four times a year. Bob was telling us and they'll get together now at midfield and I'm sure that Slocum will say to Stoll whoo you put a scare into us no question about it good game plan you coached well and I'm sure that Stoll will say hey congratulations good luck to you the rest of the way. I think it's what he's saying is don't ever scare us like that again. <laughs> <laughs> Almost ruined their friendship. Yeah. <laughs> Well certainly for Missouri as you mentioned these moral victories are nice but now they go against a team in Indiana that's tough but a team that they probably feel like they're a little more competitive with. I think they're building some momentum under Don Lindsay and their new defensive system. I think they've got players believing that they can be competitive. Hey, when you come within 13 points and acquit yourself very well against the number five team in the nation and who knows if Texas A&M ends up winning the national championship won't it look good on Missouri's resume mm. to look back at a loss like this where they dominated on both sides of the ball for three quarters and Missouri will think back to a couple of plays in that second half that 73 yard touchdown pass from Granger to Harrison and then that interception near their own end zone and A&M was able to take it in from only 16 yards out those two plays really turn the tide it certainly it looks that way I mean when you look at the statistics and look how Missouri dominate on both sides of the ball but to dominate is one thing you have to stop the big play and you hear coaches harping on that a lot you can play as well as you want for 50 plays but if 51 is a long touchdown pass it can just kill you and that was the only uh, Missouri's only downfall throughout the day let's soak in some of this tremendous atmosphere the Aggies have this tradition going and fans in from College Station to come to Columbia, Missouri. That's great stuff. College football's fun, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's just a, an atmosphere that's just real fun to be around, especially in Aggie Land. You get down to College Station and uh, you know you can't plan weddings during the fall <laughs> on an Aggie Saturday oh, because no. no one will be there. They're watching the yeah, Aggies. Not the groom, not the bride. Yeah. And now with R.C. Slocum, a relieved coach is Brian Nooner. Coach, your old coach who made it from Kansas State, Bob. Oh, kind of gave you a little scare up here today, didn't he? Well, we knew it was going to be tough. You know, they're coming in here, they're home open. We knew they'd be excited. But they had a good football team. They're doing a good coaching job here. And uh, good teams hanging there and find a way to win. I was proud of our players for hanging there and playing four quarters. In the end, it looked like the running game it's kind of wore them down. Well, I think eventually, you know, what we do, we've got uh, good backs, and uh, that's part of the deal. After a while, we try to wear them down a little bit. But I thought it was a good ball game. Both teams played hard. All right, thanks a lot for joining us, Coach. Sure. Back up top. Thanks, Brian. We'll add our final thoughts when we come back to Columbia in just a moment. Our final score, the fifth-ranked Aggies of Texas A&M 26, the Tigers of Missouri 13. We'll be back to Columbia in just a moment. It's, uh, it's really good to be back home. We get to stay here for a while. We've got an open date uh, this week, and then we have three straight home games. Uh, here at Kyle Field before we have to go on the road again. So we're happy to be here and we were especially pleased uh, to be 4-0. When, when I started out uh, this summer uh, looking at our schedule, we said if we could somehow get through that first four game stretch, get back home, have a week off to, to get ready for our, the beginning of our conference play, then we will have had a good start. And I'm pleased that we have accomplished that uh, and it's not been easy, mm. but uh, we, we're 4-0. And we've got some guys we may get back. I think Doug Carter has a chance to be back for the Tech game, possibly John Ellis are. So uh, things are looking up. Uh, you said something on the call-in show last Thursday night that I think is, is very true, where you told the team at the end of practice on Thursday that whoever we play this year, they're going to be up to play the Aggies. And I think that was another example on Saturday. Uh, that's part of, of where we are, Dave. Uh, as a ranked team, uh, you get a lot of publicity. And any time you go in uh, to, to wherever you play, you can rest assured that you're going to get their best shot. Uh, the coaches do a better job of preparing. Uh, the team does a better job. They're more, more focused. And a lot of time out of uh, respect and a lot of time out of just concern that they might get embarrassed. And you get, you get the, the very best effort, the best uh, uh, plans. And uh, it's not unusual at all for, for tough games to, to be played under those circumstances. Cal, John Robinson told me once that uh, he said that we was talking about they had had a game at LSU uh, prior to my going out to Southern Cal, which they won in the last quarter. 
came from behind to win. And uh, I'd, I'd heard some of my friends losing. I said, boy, we played a well at USC, but we played them, played them up off the feet, you know. And he said, you know, there are a string of teams all over the country. He said, boy, we had a USC right on the ropes. Mm -hmm. But he said, we win the game, get on the plane, go back home, get ready for next week with another victory. And they used to go around all week talking about how close they played USC. So uh, I think that goes with it. Not that, uh, that we've reached the, the stature of, of a USC was in its prime, but uh, we are in a position where every newspaper in the country has our ranking in there, and there's considerable talk about it. So we're getting that. We expect that. It won't get any easier in the Southwest Conference. It'll probably intensify. All right, we're going to have the uh, first half highlights from the Missouri game when we continue on Aggie Football 92 with head coach R.C. Slocum. Challenges when uh, you went into the Missouri game, did you feel like that uh, they were going to present to us? I, I figured uh, <laughs> that, that we would get a very similar defense to what we'd got, uh, gotten against Stanford, uh, that we'd get some type of eight-man front because that's uh, knowing Don Lindsay, their defensive coordinator, uh, that's been his style for a long time. An aggressive eight-man front with a lot of, lot of straight man coverage. And uh, we felt like going in that uh, we'd have some tough moments in the ball game. Uh, didn't really realize we'd have as many <laughs> as, for as long as we did. But it was very similar. They, they didn't do anything any differently than what we prepared for. We expected that. Uh, their offense probably, uh, we had not had a good chance to see them. We, we knew that they'd changed their offense. The week before, they got down early in the Illinois game, 24 to nothing. Mm -hmm. And then in the second half, they were in a comeback situation, so they were throwing the ball much more than they did against us. And they came back and made it a 24-17 game. So we really had not had a good chance to see just what their offensive philosophy was going to be. I thought they did an, an excellent job trying to counteract uh, our blitz. Uh, they were not going to sit in there and do a lot of throwing the ball downfield and us sack their quarterback. Mm -hmm. Instead, they, they uh, would drop back and throw a lot of the short uh, crack screens, quick screen type things where they get our defense rushing up the field, get us in man coverage, and just dump the ball off where we really didn't have a lot of chance to, to uh, sack the quarterback. And, and then mix that up with a lot of passing situations on several third and then long situations. They actually ran the ball, ran the draw, gave us a pass read, uh, got us spread out over the field and ran the draw. And, and so they did a good job keeping us a little bit off tempo and taking advantage of what we, what we do best. So I thought they had a good game plan. It was their home opener. Uh, they had finished the Illinois game with some, in, some encouragement there in the second half. So they, we got their, their best shot and, and they are a young, a team that's played a lot of lot of football. I think last year they played, uh, maybe they had 55 Letterman or something like that coming back off last year's team. Yeah. All right, let's go to the uh, first half at Faroe Field on Saturday afternoon and watch the Aggies and the Tigers. Really a nice day in uh, Columbia, Missouri. They had a good crowd, something around 40,000, I think, maybe a little more than that. Uh, clear skies, a little bit of breeze, not much of a factor. Here's Jeff early in the game. Uh, seeing the blitz come in the man coverage, checked off, throws a nice, uh, what we call a hitch route. And Ryan Matthews does a good job of, of breaking tackles there, running through two or three, and uh, actually looked like he had a little bit of an incidental face mask there. Here's a second three with Missouri on offense. Handing the ball up the middle, their tailback uh, being stopped there. The, the one back, and you can see throughout these uh, tapes here that they did a lot of the one back. They were mixing between a one back and a two back. Here we are on another first and 10, handing the ball to uh, Greg Hill up the middle. And, and really, I thought uh, for the most part, uh, particularly in the second half, uh, Greg did a good job running the football. Ended up uh, for the second uh, week in a row over 100 yards of offense. Here they are running the draw play that I mentioned earlier in a passing situation. Missouri scores to go ahead seven to nothing and kicks off. Uh, here's Ray Megan's uh, one of our young kick returners taking it and making a nice return right there and see the play out of bounds. Uh, there was no flag on this play later on in the game. Jason Atkinson was in about the same. Oh, I think is identical play where he actually did not hit the, the player and was trying to hold him up and was flagged and sometimes those things get seen. I'm not being negative about the fish eat, but I'm, I'm really just trying to defend. Uh, we got some penalties that could have gone either way in the ball game and sometimes people get a good look at those and sometimes they don't. Uh, here's our punter David Davis doing what he's done all year and just doing a great job of punting the punting the football. I, I'm so proud of him. He has been a consistent player all year and I think he's one of the best around. Here's our defense again on the draw play up the middle. 
Uh, that's Larry Jackson in there from over here at Rockdale. Uh, uh, really, uh, Larry made some nice plays in the ball game. Here's Jeff on the bootleg pass, does a good throw, and there's uh, Cliff Gross slipping down. They had uh, a turf, Omni turf. There are only two in the nation, and uh, it was an extremely slick surface uh, for both teams, obviously. Uh, we had some guys slip down, and they did as well, so I don't think it was a factor in the game, but it did affect our play. There's Jeff on another completion to Ryan Matthews. Hand back counter play, good play by the defense there, stopping their running game. They played two quarterbacks against us. Here's one right here. Aaron Glenn steps in front, makes an interception, real nice play. And Aaron uh, is really going to be an outstanding player. Here's a replay of it. You can see the great timing on his part on the outcut, comes right in front. You'd love for him to have just a little bit more room on that sideline there. And it, I think you could have chalked that one up. Here's Greg making a nice cut back to the inside on the sweet play and running for extra yardage, giving great effort here. And I'd like to, to make this point that he, even though the score was tight, we were behind at this time, about to go uh, right now seven to three. Uh, our players were giving good effort. Uh, we've not had a, a case this year of our players not giving good effort, not trying. And as long as they do that, uh, I'm happy and proud of them. And, and we'll take what comes. So we'll work to correct the mistakes. Here's Sam Adams giving great effort, chasing the football here. I was saying earlier, they played two quarterbacks, actually alternated quarterbacks uh, throughout the game. There's Aaron Glenn almost coming up with an interception there. Halftime score 10 to 3. And I'm sure there were some concerned Aggies around the country, and I know there were some uh, at the stadium that uh, were concerned about our position. And uh, we've been here before, so uh, in all uh, honesty, I can say I was concerned, but not, uh, not to the point of. of uh, uh, of panicking. Uh, I told our team at halftime I felt like that they had had all the breaks. Everything that could go their way had gone their way and we really hadn't had any. We had uh, a back slide down, receiver slide down, we had uh, balls that were were uh, not thrown, we had balls not catch. We really, it was one of those games where I say just if we hang in there we're going to get some of these breaks coming back our way and just keep playing we'll be fine and I told the team at halftime this thing's over we're going to be 4-0 on that plane back to Texas if you keep playing like you're playing right now the tide's going to turn and we'll start getting some breaks we're going to wear them down and again part of our style and I think you've seen that in every ball game we've played this year that uh, as the game goes on, we get stronger. And I think part of it is trying to tackle those backs. And I hate to keep reflecting back on USC, but the year I was out there, with Marcus Allen won the Heisman Trophy. Yeah. And it was not unusual at all. The first quarter, Marcus would make two yards a carry. The second quarter, he'd go to three. The fourth quarter, third quarter, he's up to making three or four yards a carry. And by the fourth quarter, it looked like every play was going to break. And, and it's that style of offense of coming and just staying after people and staying after them and then eventually wearing them down and, and making you yards. All right. Uh, we'll have the second half highlights a little bit later in the program. You stay with us. Meet uh, members of the coaching staff and uh, got a great bunch of guys. We meet another one tonight in Mike Sherman. Uh, Mike Sherman, uh, the coaches refer to him as the grinder. I'm sure the players <laughs> do too because he he's one of the hardest working guys that we have on the staff. Uh, coaches, our offensive line uh, has done an outstanding job uh, this spring. Three of those guys that we had coming back, uh, Tyler Harrison, John Ellisar, and Dexter Wesley, all missed the entire spring. So uh, Mike has had to try to catch those guys up. And I think uh, if you look at our line from the first game, uh, to yesterday, we've improved in the offensive line. Uh, there were some big holes out there. I watched the tape with Mike this afternoon, and uh, there were several times there where Greg had big holes and slipped down trying to get to those holes. All right, let's have a closer look now at Mike Sherman. I think we're making some progress. Uh, we went into the season knowing that we had to improve our pass blocking, and I think we've come uh, a long way uh, in that endeavor. I believe that uh, going against our defense consistently through spring ball and then camp has helped us in that area. You know, you're blocking Sam Adams every week and uh, Eric England and Lance Teichelman. Uh, those guys are pretty good, and uh, they make you better. So I think we've improved our pass blocking. That was one of our goals going into camp. 
I think we're always going to see uh, something that's going to try to take away Rodney Thomas and Greg Hill's effectiveness as runners. And uh, the way you do that is to try to outnumber uh, the blockers. And uh, and that's what Stanford did, and that's what uh, in Tulsa did this past week. And uh, I imagine uh, other people are going to do the same. And uh, again, uh, our whole offense has to be able to respond to that challenge. we got to be able to pass protect and uh, throw and catch and do all those things to, to keep them back uh, off our running game. And uh, I think we're going to evolve into into being a very effective passing team before it's all said and done. But, but John, you know, be, being a guy that's been a, a three-year starter, uh, it, it affects you because of his leadership capabilities and being the only senior in that group. It's exciting, however, when you can put a guy in there like Jeff Jones or John Richard who can come in and, and help you out because you know you're going to have those guys back next year. I'm anxious to get John back because of his leadership capability and also his